Bazaar is intended for mature, open-minded audiences only. If you are easily offended, we suggest you turn this wacky shit straight off. <laughs> I went to take a shit, and two minutes into pooping, he's like, Daddy, I got poop now. <laughs> I'm like, cool, I'll just squeeze this off and let you do that. He was inspired. Yeah. <laughs> that looks so good, so refreshing. Yeah. I'm going like to drop... What I, I like smelling here mm. <laughs> drop a little anchor myself oh jeez. so i was like it's time for a drink so yeah. i just made me one fancy fancy corpse survivor number two. Oh yeah we got a cold or a flu going it's not cold yeah. but you tested i, I, I tested that. twice so uh, the kid had a chest cold for about 14 days and i thought me impervious to it to be frank yeah i was wrong you can get and that so... way being a parent you can definitely sort of build up that impervious to it or you get every little thing that comes along too yeah that's the worst right now is uh when you don't have covid but you have a cough oh it's like you can't go anywhere without no. feeling you know no you're a fucking pariah <clears throat> i just went to so we we all dodged bullets at by going to the <laughs> the burlesque show yeah. you know i mean with the the first one we did this year was at new year's that was a much bigger we're like fuck because that was right when ami was first really blowing up it was really blowing up and they were still recommending that you wear a mask and uh you know we didn't police it but we strongly advised people to wear masks a lot of them were but uh this time around you know wenatchee has been pretty it, people are definitely getting covid but no one's no one seems to be going to the hospital that i know of so I, I think well see people like lyle are still <laughs> they're always going to be more susceptible yeah. but i mean like in the last like the last few weeks. Sure. It just seems like it's mellowed, but uh, you, you, know, you don't want to get cocky. Exactly. You certainly don't want to get cocky, and uh, anything could happen. But I feel like, I think most of us feel like maybe we are at the, well, enough of us are vaccinated, enough of us have had it, and it's mutated in a way that seems to be working out for the best so far. Mm -hmm. TikTok. Yeah. Uh, TikTok. So, but anyway, you know, we dodged the bullet at the burlesque show. And then I went to my first full theater show. I went and saw The Wizard of Oz here locally. Uh, fucking incredible production. You know, the, for a little podunk town like Wenatchee, we have an incredible theater presence here. It's just yeah. nuts. And this was just a special effects bonanza. <laughs> wow, I've never seen that, like a local production of that. I was surprised that it was so based on the movie. Huh. Um, I ran into some of the people that put it on. Let me get Lyle on board here. Um, I ran into some people that put it on last night, and I was asking about it. I was like, well, how does that work? Because I didn't see anything about MGM in any of the um, documentation, you know, the playbill and all that stuff. You look through it, see all the credits. Saw a lot of credits, nothing about MGM, and I know it's not in the public domain. It won't be for another 10 or 15 years. Uh, huh. Anyway, it, it was amazing. And completely, I don't know if it was completely sold out, but it was damn close. Probably about like the burlesque show, where maybe there is like, I don't know, 10 empty seats in the entire theater. But this was a big theater. Was it, oh, it wasn't the same this place. Is the, okay. This is the pack. Oh, uh, wow. Okay. I think that holds closer to 500, so. Huh. That's where I'm gonna go see Brass Against. Although they're playing out in the, uh, out in the, uh, they've been doing shows out in the, I can't remember what's the fucking the patio, I guess. Patio doesn't really sound. I mean, it's, it's a courtyard, I guess. That it's, a, it's a really big space. You, you remember where the big beautiful fountain downtown is? Yeah. Uh, that those steps lead down into a bigger sort of grassy knoll and then below that is a open cement courtyard right before the big doors to get into the pack that's where they're they've been holding some shows outside in the open air and it's uh, really really cool you know they, they've done some stand-up shit they did some uh, musical stuff but this is their first like full-on uh, rock show and you know brass against is not a uh, they're well known now though they certainly are but they're not you know they cover like Rage Against the Machine and Tool and um, what's the wake up? Da -da 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 makeup. <laughs> oh, um, what's system, it? system of yeah, the system down. down. Yeah, okay. yeah, and you know, there's a lot of fucks in those songs, so it's going to be interesting to hear um, a beautiful black woman yelling fuck a lot out in the courtyard. <laughs> Wenatchee stars. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> I'm really, really excited about it. 
Uh, I, I don't expect any trial droppage. I was going to say, you're going to show up with the can on your head just to see what happens? <laughs> it's, I told you I reached out to them for an interview. I, I heard back from the first chain in command. Uh, yeah. They're going to pass it on. Uh, maybe I'll get an interview. Maybe I won't. I probably won't bring it up. But if, <laughs> I don't know, we'll see. If it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation, usually these things are done over email, and they're a little more stiff. They got pros and cons. Uh, a little more stiff, but you also get a little more thought put into the answers, you know, and sometimes people can spend a couple of nights with it and think about it. So, But I do like sitting down one-on-one -on -one with people or sitting down with the band. Uh, you know the band Modern English? Uh huh. They're playing at the pack uh, next month. And I got a very brief window to interview them, so I'm just going to try to... Sneak over there and see if I can't catch them uh, rehearsing a little. I'll stop the world and melt with you. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. Uh, so I got some some interesting things cooking up here. Mm -hmm. She's coming to life again. Um, you want to add Lyle? <laughs> sure, buddy. Just try, John. I don't know what the fuck has happened here. I'm going to have to spend some time really thinking things over about Skype. Well, I got a, a whole pile of news stories to get to, and since we got to be out of here at 8, I think we should move along. I also have a game to play, knowing that Christopher wasn't uh, feeling top best, top shelf material tonight. Nope, yeah. Took, took the crash of uh, coming up with a weird triv, so Thank I'm going gonna, you, sir. I'm gonna bring a, we're going to end the show with a little uh, elimination, and I think this one might be kind of interesting. These All are always right. fun for me. I hope they're fun for you. Uh, I, I don't want Every it to time be one. they've been... Anytime they're pop culture -y, I love them. Every That's time they're like places with. in the world, I'm like, uh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it is harder, and we'll uh, we'll see how you do tonight. It's definitely pop culture-centric, um, but something we haven't really done before. I'm curious to see where, where uh, you all land, but... My first story right off the bat is a wacky one that's fairly close to home, Vancouver, Washington. This is almost all the way down. It's essentially across the river from Portland. An Arby's manager, has <laughs> he was accused of peeing in the milkshakes. Oh, and boy. I don't know. for am I, Peeing in anything is gross, but am I wrong in thinking that peeing in a thick, creamy <laughs> milkshake <laughs> treat is somehow a little worse? Just somehow a little worse than most anyway like what would well, be know, the worst guess, what would be worse if, if you ask your bear girls you'll just say it's it's sanitary but like you know i don't know somebody else's urine's gonna like it's not like drinking your own we'll you talk a, a bit more about the sanitary like issue drink. in a minute yeah it, it's all kinds of wrong um now here's some deeds right off huff post police in vancouver just across the columbia river from portland oregon said they uncovered footage footage i wonder if that's been released i didn't see it on the story of the 29 year old man peeing into a bag of milkshake mix <laughs> as they were executing a search warrant on oh, his phone no. as part of a child pornography investigation the story oh, wow, just unravels yeah. so they wouldn't have even known about this but he, he he videoed it himself on his own phone and when they uh <laughs> they got got his phone as part of the search warrant I don't know if they found more child porn on there, how that investigation's going, but this story is all about the pee. Um, the manager made one court appearance last Wednesday on child porn allegations and another on Friday for a new allegation of second-degree assault with sexual motivation. Hmm. After police said they found the 16-second urination video. Uh, the manager acknowledged to investigators that he urinated in the milkshake mix bag at least twice. Oh, God. But said that he was, quote, <laughs> they quoted in the story, he they said he was, quote, almost sure, unquote, he threw that bag out. I was almost sure that uh, my <laughs> piss bag went in the garbage, but uh, it's hard to say. This guy's, yeah. the, this guy's you know, a gem. What's, what's worse is he's the fucking manager. Well, he goes on to say that he was working alone as the manager, you know, closing up shop in the restaurant that night and that he did it solely for sexual gratification. So at least this was not out of animosity. You know, this wasn't an attack. This was a release. This was a uh, sexual. <laughs> you imagine? Sexual and in some weird Bodello or Bodello? That's, that's a like. Um, okay, so, Bordello, okay. uh -huh. Whorehouse? Yeah, there you go. Uh, some dude has a strange fetish of. Uh, 
You know, you eat my pee. No, I'm sure it exists. <laughs> I'm sure that exists. But he oh, told no. detectives that if he didn't Excuse throw me? that bag away, it would have been <laughs> added to the other mix by the next shift and served customers. So bit of an iffy situation. Uh, now, another manager at Arby's told detectives the restaurant sold at least one ice cream float and about 30 to 40 milkshakes that day. Oh. Woof. Woof, man. I mean, I wonder... <laughs> It, it makes you think what what we actually consume in our lifetime without knowing that would make us wretch if oh, we yeah. knew, you know, with dining out. We're at the oh, mercy of God. Fast food, I always think, is the worst, but this can happen anywhere. Uh, yeah. One disgruntled worker left alone in the back, or sometimes they, they team up. A bunch of disgruntled workers. We've heard stories about that where it's like they they're all in on it. And uh, anywho, it didn't really say whether or not that this was going to bring forth any new charges. It sounds like the dude has bigger, bigger problems with a rape and kitty porn charge. But in positive Lordy. news, going back to what Lyle said, the uh, health department, the spokesperson from the health department said there aren't many serious health risks at all from drinking pee. So bright sidesies, huh? It's not all bright sidesies. Oh, Lordy. Yeah. Bad news. Pee. In the milkshake, sir. <laughs> it reminds me of, uh, I've seen video footage of bartenders uh, using their wang for mixing drinks. No. Yeah, it's a real thing. Huh. Oh, wow. Mm, talk about fish. That big news thing from quite a while ago. See, this is what I'm saying, man. I think, I think you'd have yeah. to be kind of a, a, a real asshole to the bartender to get that sort of treatment, right? I think it's... Oh, yeah. Well, also, most of that stuff is... Is like somebody pissing off the server or the or the kitchen or something. Wouldn't that be a little stingy wingy on the wingy dingy? <laughs> like Ugh. dipping your cock in anything alcoholic has to sting. And then you got some syrups and citrus. Uh, I mean, their citrus is basically in every cocktail. Uh, cocktail, and then stirring yeah, that man. up. Oh, no, yeah, sir. Can... That's that. That's kind of a fuck you and fuck them act. There's no way that's pleasant. I don't know. Like I said, don't, I'm not hearing fun. any arguments. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, so like, what? You I've haven't never tried it. You so. haven't swizzled. Oh. They call <laughs> this <laughs> swizzling. <laughs> this <laughs> oh no! Let the new swizzle with my nizzle. It's with the kids. Swizzle, swizzle, dizzle. Uh, always use a double. Always use a <laughs> double swizzle with my. Using dizzle. my double D. <laughs> uh, here's one that the day, day. I had. I had to cross reference to make sure this wasn't just like a singular episode. Um, and I don't know why I was surprised. I guess I'm not really surprised, but it, it, this is, there's a new, so I guess fairly recently Jim Carrey was on SNL and he, among other skits, was doing one where he was impersonating Joe Biden. Yeah. And that may have actually launched a hilarious and ridiculous new conspiracy theory that, uh, you know, from small camps of the far right that Jim Carrey and other actors are actually ha being hired right now to portray Biden in real life <laughs> yeah, to cover up so the fact dumb. that <laughs> the real Biden died last year, I think is the, the most of the theories. This is really happening, folks. So Jason Svelg from The Good Liars show, sort of like a comedy uh, reality type series, was interviewing some protesting Trumpsters when he stumbled upon this little nugget. This is real short, but give a listen here. And these people look exactly like you imagine. One lady's head to toe and like all Americana shit. Mm -hmm. uh, the dude that's standing next to her, I don't think he says anything, but his shirt says uh, Trump and JFK Jr. <laughs> for president and vice president. Oh, wow. All right. Coming 2024 election. Mm -hmm. That thing is still going. Okay, give a little listen to this here. You think Biden is not alive right now? No, the guy that's doing the stand-up job of trying to wake people up is an actor wearing a mask. I mean, there's several different people playing <laughs> Joe Biden at this point. And the, when, when he fell up the stairs going on the airplane, I myself think that that was Jim Carrey. I've heard that he was one of them. I, wait, 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 wait. You think that Jim Carrey <laughs> was wearing a mask and From was and the acting president? Silly and being silly by falling up the stairs three different times. And James Woods also, I think, is one of the doppelganger mask-wearing people. You think Biden is not alive? Right James now? Wood is it James Wood or James Woods? I think it's Wood without the S. 
Either way, James Wood, that guy is pretty well known for being a bit of a conspiracy theorist and a, a right winger. I don't know why he would be in on it. Uh, but these you people, know, you know, they, they're, none of these loops ever have to fully close. None of the yeah, <laughs> none, that makes sense. None of the trails ever have to there's go no anywhere. Real, there's no real logic. It's all surface bullshit. But this has you know, this has blown up into a thing. Now, people on Twitter are loading all these videos, and there's a whole Reddit that's blowing up, and people are sharing, oh, I think I got something here, you know, the usual shit, and saying, I think this might be the real Biden, and this was the last time we saw him, and he died a year and a half ago. Here's the fake Biden. It was like, well, first of all, Joe Biden is barely standing at, mo <laughs> at most given times. Um, so if you're going to pretend that he's alive, why not okay. make him just a little okay. bit better? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why, not, why not make him a little more vibrant? And uh, I do believe that Joe Biden is alive, barely. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This just it never stops with these people. I I understand we all need hobbies. I get that. But it just never stops. You know I, who we need? We need uh, Alex Jones to come back with all the oh documentation. God, I wonder what he thinks about this. You know, it, he he isn't getting less crazy. He just looks less crazy day by day because now people <laughs> well, everywhere are saying shit that is as crazy or crazier than anything that ever came out of Alex Jones's mouth. That's well, he just lost a big lawsuit against the Sandy Hook families where he has to pay yeah, them a ton of money. Shit, a ton of money. Good and fucking good. Like Yeah, he uh, apologized for that, but too little too late, sir. That that yeah. was fucked. Like he was ruthless about that. And yeah. imagine surviving something like that. Of course you can't. You can't even imagine. You you can't even role play for a little bit of going through something like that. But and then after that, <laughs> you're being accused. And not just accused, you know, they were, Alex and his cronies especially were harassing these people and like calling them liars. And they were getting death threats. And they, they're just trying to recover what's left of their Losing broken, their shattered fucking yeah. lives. And uh. they got to deal with that shit. Yeah. Um, no sympathy at all for Alex Jones here. I, I think he'll be just fine. Because he's making a shit ton of money, but they they really nailed him with that, and that was that was a landmark case, because we're in an era right now where people think they have the right to say whatever they want to say. That's not yeah. freedom of speech. That's not how it fucking works. Uh, you there are consequences, and you know you can't just say whatever you want about something. That's the whole fucking point of what's happening with the the Depp and Heard trial right now. Which, by the way, today was fucking Jesus. Right. Fire. Did any of you guys? I know Lyle well, watched it. No, but you guys I don't watch just, any of it. Just like, no give, me, interest, give me the broad strokes. Well, the strokes from the broad. Mostly it was, well, it was almost all Amber. Um, there was a little bit more from, oh no, they picked up where they left off yesterday, which is all the uh, cross <laughs> examination. And it was, it was pretty brutal. The Johnny Depp's lawyer, I'm spacing her name, uh, who was running the show today, is, she's a badass and she was. She was going for it, and there was this really interesting moment where, well, moment, it seemed like it went on for 20 fucking minutes. The lawyer was pointing out that, because Amber keeps saying that she's not interested in money, none of this was ever about money mm -hmm. or fame or attention, and they're saying, well, but you got $7 million out of this settlement or whatever, and, and she kept <laughs> saying, which I immediately donated to charity, and she, she can't help herself but look, constantly look over at the jury. She's constantly looking at them. Even when she's not talking, she's just staring. She she has to know how they're <laughs> reacting to every little thing. But the, the, the lawyer was like, well, but d this was you know years ago at this point, and you still haven't given a dime to this charity, right? She was supposed to divvy it up to two different charities. That's what she kept saying. Yeah, yearly payments. Yeah, and she, well, no, she, she but she hadn't paid anything. And then oh, she, she kept saying, <laughs> oh, no, I, I absolutely gave. I, I pledged that money immediately. And the lawyer was like, you pledged, but you haven't given any. And she's like, I've, I've, I've given all of it. And she's like, but you haven't actually given a penny of that money in like two or three years, however long this has been, certainly over two years. And she kept saying, I, no, I pledged. And he was like, to me, giving and pledging are synonymous. And she's like. Yeah. Uh, it's not huh. synonymous. If you, yeah. uh, you know, if you promise to do something for somebody, 
that's different than you doing, doing something, something for somebody. Yeah. Uh-huh. The promise is nice, but only if you, <laughs> you know, you live up to it. Yeah. And they just could not get her to say it. Like she couldn't, she wouldn't fucking say it. But the point was proven pretty hard. And it was a, it was a rough, rough couple days for Amber. <laughs> yeah. From my recollection, I, I, what I was told or what I remember being heard anyway was like yearly, she would give a chunk of that until it was all paid off to $7 million. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, is like, why would you do something like that? And which would make a hell of a tax write-off if you well, think about it. If you're making $2 yeah. million a year, and so what's what's about, you know, three hundred or $30,000 or something, or whatever she would be paying. Well, their angle is that she did it. She said that you don't to charity. appear yeah. that she's no. not interested in money, but yeah. she never let go of a dime of that. Not it, none of it went to the charity, right? And then she kept oh, talking you... about how she got other people to donate their own money to that charity, and they're like, mm-hmm. "What?" Well, but that's their money, not your money. And she's like, "Right," and that doesn't count toward mine. But uh, I got a, a million and a half donated to them from blah 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 and blah blah blah. <laughs> You're like, "Yes," but none of your. It went on and on and on. And by the way, this is all broken up with about fifty fucking sidebars. There are so many <laughs> sidebars in this trial, and even the experts are like. This is way too many fucking sidebars. Like, this is not <laughs> normal. Uh, what did you think about that elevator uh, footage? Is it the one with James Franco? Yeah. <laughs> it looks like they're going for a hookup to me. <laughs> oh, weird. I was, uh, was kind of busy during that. Um, to share oh, share really? what it was, and yeah, maybe oh. I missed something big. Well, she went up to the penthouse, I guess, and then it shows her going up. And I believe... Maybe she's going down. That could be it too, because she was Not in the yet. Okay, here <laughs> right? I'm gonna play it while you're talking. But uh, you see him walk in. You know, well, she's she's in there, and I mean they get real kind of close together and start like rubbing heads. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So you could see from like you know a video camera aspect of it all. That's where it, it looks kinda... like. Uh, it looks like something sweet's about to happen. If you know what oh, I'm saying? Yeah. I'm looking at a different piece of footage i guess because this says johnny depp filmed agitated well yeah, it's this, not john. this must be something else oh james franco was in the yeah, elevator. yeah. oh okay. yeah why well, they were still together so like he was at oh, a town just... that's why you you hear about circumstances of why he's he's jealous and he's like that what is... the fuck's going on with so that does change it because she made it sound like it he was, was not just jealous because they were acting in a movie together or something like and, that. But, or, you know, high on drugs. But this is clearly uh, some canoodling. Yeah, there's some <laughs> canoodling going on there for sure. Uh-huh. You know, James, I mean, you still listening? <laughs> yeah. No, can he be with us, baby? James, Franco, baby. <laughs> Phone in. Give us the scoop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, leave leave me the fuck out fast. of this, bro. I don't remember the details except some, we got, somebody. We got a... <laughs> Yeah, we go got an email from somebody that was at a party that she's like, you're not going to believe this, but I, she worked in like the industry. Like, I don't know what did she, didn't, she didn't, wasn't an actress or anything. She worked on like a production staff or something. Uh-huh. And she was like, I was at a party that James Franco happened to be at. And I no shit. I walked out and he was playing a snippet of, um, how our tales from the space pod right. and laughing at one of our jokes for with his friends. And I was like, that's fucking amazing. That's right. Well, that's older news, man. I remember that. Yeah, that was a while back. Um, that's why so I there's, can't remember there's one more kind of curious uh, little tidbit about today. Did you see the part with the the whole tweet of what she was supposed to tweet out? Yeah, she, and no. I never, I never tweeted that. I never did that. I was, I shared it. And you could you know, obviously anybody that's like over fucking twenty probably knows <laughs> or two. That she, yeah. <laughs> How she Twitter works. It. Yeah, she tweeted it, most definitely. Well, she kept trying to make it sound like a retweet is not a tweet. So she kept, she was saying, no, I never yeah. I never tweeted that. I never posted that. I never said that. It's like, well, you, you retweeted it. It's like, I retweeted it. Like, so you, yeah. you, you, you tweeted it out to your followers. It's like, no, I didn't, I didn't tweet it. I retweeted it. It's like, <laughs> there's so much of this nonsense. And it's, it's like, it's all like that. It's just it's all a like bad that. fucking look. See, this is it's why, stupid. this is why I do feel like Amber yeah. is, a different story than Johnny. Johnny has been in some tough spots on that stand and he doesn't look good, but he's not doing that shit. He's just, you know, he's just kind of like saying, yeah, I was acting like I was acting the goat that night. And they're like, were you drunk? 
and he's looking at a video of him pouring like half a fucking a bottle into one of, one glass like, yeah, and he's, he's like his exact response was like uh there's a very high possibility of that. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, <it's just> like, <laughs> and you know, but even when he's like really against the wall and he's just like, it's the as bad as it ever got that I saw was like, he's saying that's just not how it happened. There's none of that, this kind of like horse shit. <laughs> it's yeah. like, well, maybe he's lying and maybe he's not, but Amber is just, this is true narcissism. There's no other way around it. Like she thinks she is smarter than everybody else in that yeah, room and that this is going to fun. work. She thinks that this is working. Uh, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's insane. There's videotape of uh, Johnny and her talking and they're inside of a uh, vehicle and they're right in front of uh, his music studio. And he's literally saying, Hey babe, listen, uh, go, go take off. You know, I, I'll call you in a couple hours. I want to spend time with my daughter. Okay. Everybody heard that in the courtroom. She was saying he, he wanted to go into the studio to get fucking loaded and then start this whole vicious cycle of the beast. You know, it's just like the monster. The monster. <laughs> oh, please. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was pretty blatant that he's just, Hey man, I just want to go fucking spend time with my daughter for a couple of hours. Ugh. I was getting some PTSD myself listening to some of that because my first wife, she's not a bad person, but we we didn't fight well. And my, you know, it was a, a very similar thing where she would want to push, no, we're hashing this out right now. No, you get out of that room. You don't hide from this. And I'm like the kind, like I need to process a little bit. I need to calm down and I need to go away. And I'm not talking about for three days. It's like, give me a little bit of space. We'll talk in an hour. And that was a really stressful way to go um and i <laughs> listening to a lot of his testimony and a lot of these recordings was just giving me ptsd on that it's like yeah I, I i get needing to just go away and calm down a little bit because nothing in my experience nothing really good is going to come out of hot-headed arguing yeah, uh, no. you know you gotta you gotta sit with it a little bit and for me i process really quickly and i usually process well it's not that I just bury it and bottle it up and, oh, I'm fine now we can talk, but I move through things really quickly, but you got to give me fucking, <laughs> give me a fucking couple inches back. Mm -hmm. uh, but anywho, uh, can't wait to see so what can tomorrow I, can I ask a, uh, Can I ask a question for those of you that are Your Honor watching, leading the, oh, sorry. I'm watching this unfold. Objection. Yeah, go ahead. Objection. Um, <laughs> I'll allow it. Do you ever, <laughs> while, while, you're, while you're watching, do you ever kind of feel like kind of bad? Like, mm -mm. Like, 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 why like shouldn't we're, be we're watching. watching, we're watching these people like just fucking melt down in front of millions of people and none of this should be public. Right. Like that's mm. how I feel about it. Kind of. I probably should, but, but I don't. Kind of <laughs> Man, I'm a sociopathic voyeur. What am I, <laughs> what do you want? Yeah. <laughs> no. This is why, that's why I've largely avoided it. Honestly, I do feel that way. I'm like, I just think they're both awful and like, <laughs> They're both they're both at blame here. One may be more awful than the other, but they're both mm -hmm. fucking awful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm surprised this case actually happened. I feel like Johnny kind of won just by not, you know, by Amber not winning in the the other mm -hmm. cases. Yeah. And it's like, well, that that, that uh, get back, get, get on with your removed. life. But sorry, go ahead. That I'm sorry, I interrupted you. I'm sorry. That petition to uh, get her removed from Aquaman 2 has the most signatures on Change.org that has ever been received. It's up to six million. That says something about <laughs> our society. Yeah. I agree with that. It's, it's fucking. It's a shame. It really mm -hmm. is. Like this is what we care about. Come yeah. on. Dude, that's crazy. Healthcare, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> law enforcement, uh, yeah. upgrades here. Uh, no, mm -hmm. can't be bothered. The homeless. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> But this, that bitch ain't going to be no Hello. fucking aqua woman. <laughs> I ain't going to stand for that. <laughs> Do you guys ever watch, uh, what the fuck was that? It's like rocket going by. Do you guys ever watch Entourage? Uh, one of the running themes, that's an old show at this point, of course, but one of the running themes was the main character. I can't even remember any of their names at this point. Um, was, was he going to get Aquaman? That was the big movie. And it was almost like a joke. So it's so funny to have seen Aquaman become a reality and now be such a part of this discussion in the otherwise fairly heavy and serious trial. And it's like Aquaman just has a funny <laughs> association with it uh, as existing as a movie. Did it ever get made? Oh, it did get made. That was Jason <laughs> Momoa, yeah? 
or there, there, or am I wrong? There, or two to come out. Yeah. No, yeah, Jason Momoa. Mm-hmm. Right. Did, you guys, did you guys see it? I, I no, never... I, I haven't watched it. I heard it was pretty entertaining, and I kept meaning to watch it, but I just never quite pressed play. <laughs> I don't know why I feel this is a guilty pleasure admission, but when I was younger, Aquaman was my shit. I loved Aquaman. And I had one of those Aquaman figures. You remember the early Marvel mm. figures, probably like mid eighties, where they had action movements. <laughs> like, oh yeah. Like I think they didn't really make sense. Like Spider Man, I think if you squeezed its arms, squeezed his arms, his legs kicked. And like Batman, if you squeeze, or maybe they're uh oh, was it D C and Marvel? Maybe they're You yeah, squeeze the legs and they punch or something. And they punch, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had the Aquaman one. Well, that, uh, Aquaman is DC, right? Yeah, yeah. So this must have been DC characters. Like, funny, I'm picturing a Spider-Man one, but uh, you push his belly, he goes. Bloop, bloop, bloop. <laughs> I think <laughs> you you squeezed his shoulders and his legs kicked so he could swim. Oh, okay. <laughs> those were pretty good characters. I remember all they those looked, toys? I remember like Mask the, and the cartoons. Yeah, yeah Mask had some cool shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. That's funny stuff. So the next time you are perusing the bins at Goodwill, you may want to think about this next story. This is, I think, this is one of the coolest stories in a while. A woman in Texas bought a sculpture, what she thought was a replica of a Roman bust, but as it turns out, it was a real ancient Roman bust. <laughs> oh, now wow. she paid thirty four ninety nine for it. And after a little asking around, you know, to some very <laughs> highly esteemed places and people, she learned that the sculpture was actually around 2,000 years old. Oh, wow. Um, this part's cool. So there was a, f- a photo forensics expert using pixel matching software, and he was able to find an existing photo of the bust in like a massive database of scanned images. Which I didn't know that thing existed, but it's super fucking cool. I guess why wouldn't it? You can, there's something like that on Google even where you can upload a photo and it'll, it'll like scan it or look at it and tell you where that photo was used throughout the internet and maybe trace some metadata down. But they traced this photo back. It was taken in Germany in the 1930s, which of course is a, Very interesting time in Germany's history. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now, this is from CNN. Uh, Lindley McAlpine, which is a name I invite you to enjoy. (laughs) Lindley (laughs) McAlpine, uh, a postdoctoral curatorial fellow at SAMA, told CNN it is believed to be the bust of, here's another good name, Sextus Pompey. A Roman (laughs) military leader. Now, his father, Pompey the Great, was once an ally of Julius Caesar. What was that for some fucking history? Holy fuck. Also a friend of uh, Biggie's Dickies. (laughs) (laughs) The Deezus Nutses. Uh, The bust was being housed in a replica of a Pompey home in Germany, uh, also known as a Pompejanum. <laughs> I don't think I'm pronouncing that oh quite God. right. Uh, which was commissioned by King Ludwig I of Bavaria. So much history tied to this one piece. And that's where it was on display in that little makeshift. It was like a museum of a replica of a Pompeii home until World War II, uh, which oh. was the last time it was seen until it ended up in a Texas Goodwill bargain bin. Um, that replica museum in Germany was bombed in the war, and someone looted what they could, and this bust was one such loot from the ashes of World War II, and it ended up back in the States. But there are looting laws concerning this kind of thing, so the treasure actually is the legal property of Germany because it was looted in a uh, time of war. That has to legally be returned to Germany. I don't know how all that works, but right now it's on display in the States, but next year it's going to be returned to Germany. So I thought that was a fascinating fucking little story. So much going on in that one little bargain bin in Goodwill. How the fuck does that happen, man? Right. I used to watch, uh, you know, I used to be a lot on Facebook. And I remember there was somebody that was in Seattle's um, music, you know, kind of like uh, page. Uh, there's a wheel and deal, you know, try to get yeah. gear, or whatever. Seattle page. 
And I was looking at it, and I guess some guy took pictures of all this musical equipment that was at the Goodwill, and they were cheap, like PV amp that was it looked like a, you know, like a backstage plus, but for like ten bucks. Mm-hmm. It's crazy stuff. Uh, Full on keyboards, stuff like that. Yeah. Like, wow. Treasures out there, man. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> like, there has to be so many things just sitting in on someone's mantle. You know, it's like, yeah, that's something my grandma bought in Italy. And the right person comes along is like, that is the missing piece from King Tut's. <laughs> you know, it's like something crazy Jesus like that. A, yeah. It's got to be all over the place. So much of that shit got looted before it was really locked down. Yeah. What was it? Fabergé? Fabergé? Fabergé. Fabergé. The eggs. Yeah. Well, there's some, some actually jewelry that's not specifically eggs but we're done up <laughs> Fabergé eggs don't look much more appealing to me than the vomit clocks if I'm being honest but uh, <laughs> holy shit those things can be oh, insanely oh, no. uh, in fact I'm going to look it up what is the most valuable Fabergé egg do you guys know what those are they're just yeah <laughs> just like jeweled eggs <laughs> they used to give them out actually the Fabergé the egg. maker would make one a year and like uh, display it to the royalties of uh, <laughs> the kid digging through the toy box back there. Oh, you can hear it. <laughs> that's all right. It, everyone knows. It's uh, yeah, that's just thinking uh, exactly that's what just reality. Is in the other room too. Um, a couple more years, he'll be on it. <laughs> okay, the third Imperial Easter egg. Oh, actually, this one is kind of pretty. I remember these being more garish, like something Liberace would have, and I guess it kind of is. But this is kind of cool looking. Yeah. They're Possibly cool. the most valuable Faber. I was saying it wrong. I was saying Fabergé. It's Fabergé. Fabergé egg in the world and recently discovered, estimated to be worth approximately. You guys want to take a guess? It's a chunk of dough. Four, Fourteen million. That's a good guess, Chris. World's most. Uh, uh five million. Favre, Fa, Fa, John Favre. John Favre yeah. egg. Uh, John Mark. What's your guess? Hmm. 25 million. Well, you're closest, but still under by a long shot. 33 million dollars. Wow. What the fuck? People got too much money. I saw a really fun stream on TikTok the other day that was Sotheby's, and it was just a live stream of one of their art auctions. It was so fucking crazy. It was like, you want to talk about, you know, we just talked last week about, uh, you know, it's funny how Ronster could be trying to whore some art at a rapid pace price to pay a $45 bill that popped up out of nowhere. And then you got people like Elon Musk. Well, it's really hard to swallow what some of these people can just pay for a little doodle by Monet or, uh, you know, something we're not talking. Oftentimes big, important, famous pieces come up for auction, but a lot of these are just, you know, some other piece that uh, is a, a lesser desired piece. And uh, just 11, 12, 16, 32, 82, 126 million dollars. <laughs> it's like, I can't even breathe. Like, I'm like, can you imagine just spending that on a thing? <laughs> yes, it's priceless. Yes, it's got all the history. Well, it's not priceless. There's the price right there. But it's, it's important. And these are important works by important people. And I get some of that historical aspect of it. But you still spent all that money enough to buy a small country on a thing that will hang on your wall. Yeah. Uh, the I, I can understand. Art. What, what I don't understand is the, what is it? The EFTs or whatever? No one understands. Literally no one understands. <laughs> NFTs. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, uh, I don't understand that. The more people explain it to started. me, the less it makes sense. And that's exactly it, dude. I, I, I feel like it's a, a con, but the people who swear by it, I know people that are dealing in, in NFT shit. It's now we're talking like hundreds and thousands, not like millions, so, but it's still I'll, like I'll, okay. I'll but you don't you, you don't own a thing. Just know that you, you don't own a, a thing. Sorry, I'll give it to you in a nutshell. This is this is what NFTs are. Do it. Educate NFTs me. are something that was invented for people that heavily invested in cryptocurrency to do something with their money because there's nothing really for them to do with <laughs> cryptocurrency right now. So <laughs> NFTs were invented for. Uh, for people that have a bunch of money invested in crypto to do something with it. And that's basically all they are. Yeah, I'll take your word for it. Are you outside, Jamal? 
That sounds pretty. I, that I is am, a very yeah. alien, alieny sounding bird, isn't it? Birds. By the way, the the whole birds are uh, not real thing. I only recently started reading up on like the origin of that. I didn't realize that that started as like a joke, and for the most part, it is a joke. But <laughs> much like the story we talked about earlier, there are enough people who actually buy into it that it became a real conspiracy theory. Like the birds are. I don't know what the theories are. They're drones or they're uh, spying on us or carrying top secret clandestine information. Speaking of birds, I remember not that long ago, I was saying, can you imagine if there's a virus going around killing all our, all our chickens? Well, there's a virus going around killing all our chickens, and it's in Washington State. Um, it's some strain of the av- avian flu. This is nothing new, but this one's being carried you know, by wild birds, and they, I, all day long I see birds... Little Tweety birds of all sorts just flying in and out of my chicken coop, stealing what food they can get. If they take a shit in there or drink out of the water, I guess they can spread that to my chickens, and it's killing a lot of backyard chickens. So <laughs> we might be on the precipice of some bad news. For uh, I would be, I would be pretty sad if all my chickens got wiped out, not just because I'd lose the eggs. I'm, if I added it up, I don't think that I'm saving much money on eggs. <laughs> Because <laughs> chickens, you know, we I, we I feed them pretty good food. It's organic, good quality food, and they go through a lot of it. And then you got to get scratch, and you got to get uh, bedding, and you know, medicine when they peck each other to death. You got to patch that up, and it's it's a financial expense. And buying a coop costs money, and it's like so, it's not really about the money, but getting them farm fresh eggs is still pretty magical. But I just love having them around. They're uh, they're entertaining. Just put a new hawk net on because the that last fucking snowstorm we had here pulled all my hawk, hawk netting down. So they've been sitting chickens. The the expression really should be sitting chickens because ducks I think are a little bit better at getting the fuck out of the way. What about sitting frogs? No oh, shit, sit. son. Yep, that's a that's a good one too. Let's see. I got one more here, and I'll turn it over to whatever you guys want to talk about <laughs> before my game. Uh, This is a little tale that I think will grab you, though. A woman with a Christian OnlyFans claims to have threesomes with the Lord. A Christian? Isn't that a... That sounds like an oxymoron to me. Well, she's an oxymoron. (laughs) Oxize moron. And it's full on. It's not like... Now, when I first saw Christian OnlyFans, I thought it's like, you, you you don't have to do nudity on OnlyFans. You can offer exclusive content. That's what it's known for, but... I, I got a few friends that do an OnlyFans, and they do some skimpy outfit stuff, and like, here's me playing pinball and lingerie and stuff like that. Uh, can we link, please. Yeah, you need to you need to meet this girl, actually, <laughs> Christopher. I think she might live closer to you than uh, to me. I'm listening, Ron. But listening. Um, she was she reached out to me out to me a while ago about doing something at Radar Station, which never came to fruition, and then she moved, and I uh, haven't really kept in touch but occasionally i'll see her facebook posts that point to her only fans and we've talked about it before she doesn't do any sex stuff this woman on the other hand does full-on like nudity sex stuff from what it looked like in fact i'll send you a little picture um she's not nude in the picture but give you an idea who we're talking about i think it wasn't that weird helps. like it was uh like love thy neighbor but she was married. <laughs> yeah, you know she I mean? loved that neighbor. Her Love husband's the mm-hmm. Isn't that how Well, works? her quote here is, Oh, fuck. I have, yeah, she she looks like she could be in porn, at least amateur porn. In fact, she, she looks familiar, God. like I might have seen her in amateur porn. She oh says, my. I have threesomes with God, and it's the best sex of my life, and it gives me, oh God. here's a quote, and it gives me heavenly orgasms. Mm-hmm. You know, this is right off the mirror UK. <laughs> this is some good shit. So uh, a, a Christian only fans model claims she has regular threesomes with God and that it's the best sex she ever had. Nita Marie, 45, says she's experiencing heaven every time she invites the Lord to join her and her husband in bed and that she does it at least twice a week. That's a good healthy number for uh, you know middle-aged married couple. The American from Colorado admits Colorado. Colorado. How do I say Colorado? I think I say Colorado, but I just said Colorado. Hmm. How do you guys say it? Colorado. Is that one of those potato potatoes? Now I'm I'm confused. Colorado sounded right when I said it. Yeah, I think it's Colorado. I 
I would say Colorado. You know, in this case, it's definitely Rado. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. Uh, the American from Colorado uh, admits her partner isn't always aware he's what? being joined in bed. He's now that's by Jesus that from seems, behind. Yeah, the Lordy. that seems like a, you know unconsensful. <laughs> what, what if this is just being jackhammered by Jesus Christ? <laughs> what if she's just being naive though, and it's just a fucking ghost? Your mom listening <laughs> like, to this episode, yeah, John? Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I'm wearing a condom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ectoplasm. Oh my God, there's so much you could, you could take this story in so many ways. I'm intrigued yeah. that she doesn't always tell <laughs> her husband. Well, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. between uh, her and the Lord and the husband <laughs> on the side. A... You think the husband just like comes and then they're sitting in bed and he's just like, wait. Was he here? <laughs> <laughs> Is he in the room now? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Did he take the wheel? <laughs> he, oh, he, he took the, the wheel. Balls, you know? <laughs> yeah. well, he told me this is a UK story, and I'm like, by her smile, I think that's wrong. <laughs> she's not from the UK. She's no, she's from Colorado, Canada. but the the story was from the UK. Uh, no the mirror. Um, where was I here? But insist that she can feel his capital H presence, even if he doesn't show up in physical form. Um, saying a prayer before they get down to business, Nita says it has improved her orgasms and her sex life and is now it's the best it's ever been. She says, I've been asking him again, capital H to join me and my husband since the very first time we made love. There's nothing more fulfilling or satisfying than when you experience God's love for you while pleasuring your partner. Listen, yeah, who am I to judge? Off. Who am I to judge? Now it's just like, yeah, suck that dick. <laughs> yeah, now I'm pissed off. Yeah, whatever you got to do, man. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, I had a couple girlfriends that used to always scream out, Jesus in bed, and now I'm pissed oh, off. No. Oh, no. Oh, jeez. Now you know. You had a third. Oh, you had a third. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You've been, you've been about about thinking the clip, the, the, the clippler. <laughs> you've been getting clipplered. Cocklocker uh, yeah, right. <laughs> the, the story goes on to say the mum of two who shares sexy content with her one million Instagram followers oh, wow. also claims that including God in her lovemaking improves her orgasms. So I don't know. Keep that in mind. It's if things like, aren't heavenly with your mate in the sack, maybe it's time to ask uh, little JC to, cuckold God mm-hmm. to join okay. in. It's worth a try, I suppose. And uh, I got a. F- I got a feeling we may have lost one or two listeners there. Maybe not, but maybe. <laughs> you know, some people get uh, sensitive about such things. Watch your uh, button push in there. Maybe well, I know it's hard. Me. It's hard because uh, <clears throat> I had to stop playing video games for a while because it was giving me. You know, I've I've got carpal tunnel issues in both arms right now. <laughs> it's real fun, but I had to stop playing video, video games. I was getting into some old NES stuff. I had to stop because I can't just casually do it like. You know, I, I get like into it and I grip that motherfucker and I'm like, oh, you know, those old games are so fucking hard and so yeah. frustrating that you just grip them like uh, there's no easy buttoning to it. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, though. Do you, do you put your thumb over the top to make it feel like you're bottoming out? Um, <laughs> what? What did you just say? <laughs> I I want to say yes, but I can't. I was I can't. pulling it and jerking it really hard. I simply but... can't. Oh, I see. Yeah, it was a joke. Um, yeah, the Konami. Um, well, that's all I got, except for a fun game of elimination. But I'm going to turn it over to anything you guys want to talk about for the duration. I want to talk about dirty fucking video games. Oh, <laughs> we were talking yeah, about video games stuff. earlier, but I didn't realize on Steam, which is you know a PC based you know downloader, download games, your favorite game. There is a dark side. <laughs> There's like an adult only section that mm-hmm. goes on thousands of games. You remember the, um, I'm trying to remember the little detective game you used to play. Um, like Leisure Suit Larry. <laughs> yeah, Leisure Suit Larry, but they're kind of like that, but some of her offshoots of that. Some are funny to play, some or whatnot, whatever. Yeah. Uh, I downloaded two of them. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. But there was one that uh, is so freaking graphic. I'm not even joking that it makes porn look bad i mean you're, you're watching this and it, everything because the thing is is like you know even with porn with good looking you know you know people mm-hmm. in general um when you go kind of like animated like cgi kind of like that i mean they're completely perfect you know they have perfect skin perfect everything and you're just like holy shit but uh, it's real look 
it's so like, really it's like getting hooked on it. a sex toy you know you might not be able to get off without it kind of perfect skin uh, well, I, just, I, thought how, I thought how weird it was are you how, like are these games are some of them like you're actually fucking like the game is to oh, fuck yes oh i yes. never understood that see i i remember <laughs> I, I still got all my Commodore 64 shit. I would, at some point, I have to dig it all out and see if it still works. But I have all my games. And, you know, my uncle gave me a whole bunch of pirated games, but there are tons of, like, titty games. And they even made, you know, they were, I'm sure, oh, yeah. I'm sure third market uh, games, but they were titty games for the Atari. So I had, and these ones didn't look much better. You know, this was for the Commodore 64. But there was one that I had that the whole point was for you to, like, you remember those old sports games where you had to like use the joystick back and forth to get somebody to run uh, mm -hmm. and then jump like <laughs> like they go faster and faster. I had one that was like that, but for fucking and you just at the end of it, you came and there's a little squirt and that was your score. <laughs> and oh, my I had, high score. High score. I had another uh, one that was porkies <laughs> and you actually went into the shower. I mean, like this was graphics that would make Donkey Kong look. Next Lev. These are terrible, terrible graphics, but there they were. 8-bit titties in a shower, and you had to climb up to her and, I guess, sexually assault her? I don't know what the fuck any of these <laughs> games were. Those, all those old movies are so... They're so uh, wrong. <laughs> you know, like sex comedies. 8-bit eight eight titties is a great band name. 8-bit titties. And I had strip poker. The strip poker was actually pretty good because that was just scans. Uh, you could tell it was like eight 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 bit uh, photo scans, and instead of like bad animation, so they would just get more and more naked. But I used to have a lot of those uh, adult games, and the ones that had titties in them were always fun. But the ones that were just about like the gameplay itself was fucking. I was like, this is I don't get this. This is so dumb. Maybe it's different with the uh, the new graphics of today. Let me ask you this though. As someone who doesn't play many modern games, are are many games right over the counter um, at your local? Is GameStop still a thing? I know that's been a controversial place. Of, any wherever around. you buy games, I guess Amazon, any old place. Most of the games that uh, everyone's playing are they just full on tits and ass in those now? No, no. no. Every, everything's really. rated. Everything's rated. You know, if they're going to so, sell. So most their... things is, is still geared toward a, a more broad audience. Isn't that weird, yeah, like though? TV. You can blow the head off Gore a Gore and violence, perfectly <laughs> fine. Sex, no. Yeah, it's exactly it. It's so fucking crazy. You can literally just get in a car and run over pedestrians and I'm just shotgun I'm a hooker's head off and watch the geyser of blood come out of her throat while she makes a dying noise and kicks and <laughs> oh, my. convulses yeah, as she falls before. Screenshots. But no boobies. Those are screenshots okay. just from... The uh, just from the advertisements. Mm. <laughs> but that's a, I love Lyle's well, enthusiasm here. So, mm -hmm. is this a game that this you that game. you fucking? Yeah, I gotta yeah check look at there's out. fucking you, penetration. Treasure, to have and treasure or pleasure of Nadia? That, the it's beginning uh, treasure. Yeah, it's I actually like a kind of. Kinda, well, the reason why I was playing it was because it was. <laughs> It, not because of that. It's because of the story. I always like read the books, of, uh -huh. just like you read Playboy oh, for the articles. Like Playboy. Now. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh -huh. like I'm intrigued. With it's, the... like an, it's like an Indiana Jones kind of a knockoff of like you know this this kid. Oh, say like your dad was like Indiana Jones type of guy, and so you want to be kind of a, a treasure seeker, but then you find out your dad was a whore and you know had like this fucking harem of bitches. And so, like, now you're like, well, I kind of want to be like him. And so you you acquire, like, 12 different girls, like, in the game itself. But it's more story-driven. That sounds like a delightful piece. story. <laughs> you acquire <laughs> it 12 was about different story. Uh -huh. Well, no, I mean, that's what it is. I mean, really. It's just girls that you hook up throughout the island or, you know, help or whatever. You know, to bang Speaking up. of harem, there, there's got to be a good, relatively new take on uh night uh, tales of the arabian nights game yeah is there anything like that out there that's those, those like, like prince of persia that book is so amazing and there's so many mm. opportunities for sex and violence and you know there are several well, this, versions of it but some of those stories are ancient yeah this even has the kama sutra in it mm. well i might have to check out some of those not to play it just 
to see what's on there. Never, never occurred to me. I love the idea of just to see the story. Huh, Ron? These yeah, idea, just, yeah. just, just to get into the story. I love the idea that anyone can make a video game and get it out onto the market now. You know, that's yeah. what I love. I really like that uh, documentary. God, it's kind of old at this point, but uh, I think it's called Indie Gamer, and it followed th- or in. Well, I, don't know. I think it's Indie Gamer, but it followed like four or five indie game makers. And one of them was making the, what was the meatball one? Where you're just like a meatball. Super meat Meat Boy? Is it Super Meat Boy? And there's like all these I think so. saws and oh, shit. Yeah. And you just get cut in half. Yeah. Yeah. That was Super one of the meat games. Boy. There's and a few probably of them. Probably the guy who did Fez, too. Yes. Right? Fez. Fez. Yeah, yeah. That was an incredible mm-hmm. looking yeah. game. That was, was a really cool story to, to follow. See them develop that. Yeah, yeah. Follow their developments and they, you know, it's all just wires and grids at one point and they got to get the controlling and all that down. Then the, the next level is like uh, all the sprites and the graphics. And then you got to test it and you had to have people find all the glitches. Then you got to take it to these conventions. And it's an interesting world that you can just do that. And a lot of these guys do get picked up. A lot of these people uh, get picked up by, you know, I think somebody in that might have got picked up by Rockstar or someone, and they go on to, or maybe some of them work for those big companies already, but they want to do something outside the box, something a little more kooky. Super cool uh, yeah, documentary. There's a, there's a lot of people that just did like mods for like fucking Quake or Half Life or whatever that mm-hmm. they're like the 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 uh, studio was like, uh, you guys did some really cool shit. You want to come work for us? And they're like, okay. <laughs> There's a mystery science theater mod for Quake, I think, or maybe it's Doom. It's so bizarre because it's just like all these references from the movies that they riffed on and some of the characters from the show. I like that kind of stuff. But, you know, that all started with like the Commodore 64 because that that system was so easy to hack that half the games that I had were just like pirated or hacked versions. Like I had a hacked version of Super Mario Brothers. But it was there were tits and dicks in it, and um, terrible to play. But it was still kind of cool, you know. Back in the day, it was like 1986, and I bring my friends over. It's like, you guys want to play Mario, but with tits? <laughs> that was pretty badass. Um, I, yeah, my point anyway is that there's a huge, huge, uh, I guess, uh, surplus of games like that on uh, Steam, which I thought was really kind of crazy because there's like. Yeah, it's kind of like watching. Uh, there, there was a a porno movie. Um, God, what was it called? Uh, so, uh, pirates, uh, strictly pirates. That's what it was mm-hmm. called. All about the the story on that one. Yeah, well, I mean, it was a pirate story. You know, there's a lot of fucking and everything else. But like, there is actually Arr. a version. Yeah, there is. There is a virgin. A, a virgin. There are virgins. No, there are a version of that that has no sex in it. Yeah. They, it made like, I wouldn't say, it was like more like cable B-movie type. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what's but, funny is that, I, you know, if, if you guys read the comment, you know that I've been doing these things called porn tunes. And mm-hmm. it's it's one of my favorite things to do for the magazine, honestly. And I'm glad to see that it's resonating with people. I've heard some pretty good feedback on it. All it is... Is I'm, I, and you could do this with literally anything, old public domain movies, um, just random shit, stock photography. You could do it with anything. I just get a kick out of the fact that it's porn. But in most cases, you would never know. I'm not doing nudity. There's no sex in it. Not really. It's just I'm using the scenes in between the sex where they're all still clothed and just having conversations and setting up a threesome or setting up whatever. And then I'll just make up a story and add the word balloons, do a little comic on them. They're only like one or two pages. And so it's funny because growing up, whenever you got a hold of a videotape, <laughs> what did we do? We, we fast forwarded through all the bullshit to get the good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm doing the complete opposite. I'm going to like Pornhub and all these other vintage <laughs> porn sites and fast forwarding through the fucking to get to the just the dudes talking in a hallway somewhere. You know, it's been a fun exercise, but I, I got a question for y'all. This may be a little, uh, little oh honest, boy. honesty time here. Have you ever whacked yeah. it to a video game? And if so, which one? Mm-hmm. Like just full on like that's that. A, I just, a great what, question. what's happening right here is so hot. <laughs> I'm just going to pause. Uh, in the I cannot moment. think of it. I cannot think of a time I've done that, but I wouldn't put it past myself. Yeah. Roster. Mm-hmm. You're the one I had <laughs> the most fair. faith uh, in for answering. Fair. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. 
Lau, what about you? It sounds like we may know <laughs> with, with <laughs> one of these games you're playing. It's kind of the whole point. Happened last night. Jack Utainment, oh, they call it. Oh. <laughs> I, I would probably say oh, it's uh, Raider. Up, 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 down, down, up, up, down, down, <laughs> up, right, up, up, down, down. <laughs> Beat. Hey. <laughs> oh, Tomb Raider. I bet lots of people Tomb whacked it to Tomb Raider. Raider with the yeah. cone tits, not the. It's more like sounds like more like Womb Raider to me, Lyle. <laughs> oh, could have been. Do you say Womb Raider? Womb Raider. Uh-huh. It's a, it's a that's a that's a short or a short. I don't know where it's going with that. It's a soft core porn. I've got it somewhere. <laughs> it's one hundred percent a Laura nice. Laura Croft. Uh-huh. Yeah. I would say Womb pointy, Raider. Pointy tits. Uh, <laughs> like the you, fucking, you, yeah, the, the, you think yeah. you whacked it to uh, Laura Croft, Lyle? Well, it's pretty possible. The I think out tits of, version, huh? All of them. Uh, or it could have been Metal, Metal There was a Metal Gear Solid when it first came out. There was a, a pretty hot chick, and it was right when the uh, controllers started to vibrate. If you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You put that down your pants. <laughs> uh-huh. It's just like, mm-hmm. dudes, where'd the controller go? Mm. Yeah, Pitfall always got me. It was a... <laughs> 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 um, I think the first... T- I didn't whack it. I don't remember whacking it to a video game. Although I might have to the old Commodore stuff. God. Oh, God. I'm sure I probably oh, did, actually. Uh, I don't remember, but I, I will say that it would be <laughs> unlike me to have not, uh, to, especially during that era when I didn't leave my house and I hadn't touched a real girl. Um, but... The first time I saw a girl in a video game that I thought, hmm, <laughs> well, that's pretty nice, was like, <laughs> you're going to laugh at the game. I think it was Vegas Stakes, but it was one of these SNES gambling games, and it was just some lady in like a sparkly red dress or something with her uh, big old boobs sort of like occasionally jiggling when she jumped up and down celebrating for you. And I was like, that, that, I think that was the first time I looked at a video game and I was like, we're getting somewhere here. <laughs> We're on the road to something big here, gang. Um, yeah, didn't whack it to Vegas Stakes, so. <laughs> John Mark, what about you? It didn't give you a chance to answer. Yeah, no. Never whacked it to a video game. Well, do you remember the first <laughs> no. time you uh, saw a woman Dude, in a video game that you're like, hmm, all right. We're getting there. No, no, not really. I kind of thought the... Uh, the main, the end villain at the end of Battletoads was hot. <laughs> I kind of never got to the end of Battletoads. Oh, yeah. oh, I never did either, but my friend Kevin did. He was the only guy I knew that could get yeah, that who could, could get to the end of fucking Battletoads? I think Jesus. He, I think he warped. He used the, there's a couple warp tricks, but that, that doesn't really help you in a game like Battletoads. That just skips you to the insane part. Like you warp yeah. past the, I never got past the, that floating jet ski bullshit. Yep. That was the one. You yep. get like up, down, up, crash. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh my god! Yeah, that shit was. That game is fucking epic, and you can watch people passing it. Uh, passing it. You guys always mock me for saying <laughs> passing it. I don't know where I got that lingo. You can watch people beating it online, and they'll. Look, I, have, I have watched people beating it online. Beating actually. online. You know, was it all day long, son? And they'll just tell you like I've played this game a thousand times, and it's still pretty fucking hard. It's like one of. The, it's got to be one of the hardest, but playable games because there's a lot of games that came out on the nas that were just pieces of shit like they were poorly designed oh yeah they're glitchy like you couldn't play it you literally couldn't oh. play it but then there were the games that you know you you could do it if you didn't suck yeah <laughs> those were the games that really got you like metroid how long did it take to fucking beat metroid Get jesus good. Christ. um that game took me for fucking ever to beat um uh, Mega Man, those were some pretty tough games the first time through. But oh, was, even to this day, Castlevania, any tricky. of those games. Yeah. Get fucked. They were tricky. They those. were tricky. They, did, they couldn't win you with amazing graphics, although some of those games I still think they're really appealing to look at. Mega Man, especially Mega Man 2 on. Some of the shit that they were doing in Batman, remember that Batman one we used to play all the time, Lyle? That was a hard game, even though there's only like five or six levels. Getting to the Joker was fucking hard, but those graphics were so cool. There's like little oh, lightning, yeah, uh, yeah. Poles the background and stuff around. Yeah. Just sh- all sorts of cool shit happening in the background. It's all dark and murky. Black, black man, Batman is inexplicably <laughs> blue. <laughs> well, I don't, yeah. I don't get why, I, or I don't uh, see why. 
I think it was because it was like a dark background and they wanted to make it look like the moonlight was like shining off him, but so it fucking didn't cool. fucking work, right? Yeah. It, I liked it though, but uh, yeah, I, I never really understood. <laughs> yeah, I guess it couldn't be black because yeah, you wouldn't see him. It was such a dark game. Anyway, that was some good old shit. I, I played that uh, not that long ago and I got to the the level that's right before the Joker. I got pretty good at that because I played it over and over and over again. It's one of those that I, I still maintain the hardest NES game was the original Turtles game. Uh, we've talked about this on the podcast yeah. before. But yeah. Fucking impossible. Yeah, that's notorious. I remember the swimming. That's the oh, one with yeah. the swimming I mean, and like it, the, is, it electrifies yeah. or the some bombs. shit. Yep. Uh huh. The was, electric. Uh, that was yeah. one of the first games I can remember where you could switch through your characters. And yeah. Uh, that and they be- all had different skills, like, yeah. like uh, strengths. Yeah. And then if like one of them had an extra pizza, you could switch over to him and like, <laughs> yeah. that was, that's kind of, that became commonplace, but that was the first, first one I can remember that Mario two, super Mario brothers two, you can um, switch. Which, which wasn't even you. originally, that wasn't even meant to be a Mario brothers game. It was no. developed as something else and they Doki bought Doki it. Panic. And I love that game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have you ever played the Doki Doki panic version? It's kind of disorienting. No. It's the exact same game with the exact same gameplay, but. It's different music and uh, it's different, you know, characters. <laughs> it's really strange, but yeah, the it's a pretty well known story in video game circles. But Super Mario Brothers, of course, the original was this unbelievable smash hit. That one game is what was responsible for the overwhelming success of the NES, um, and they needed a new one, so they. I don't know if they rushed it, but all they did for the second one was they basically made Super Mario Brothers, but harder. It was just new levels. In fact, if you you may remember when Mar- Super Mario All Stars came out, and maybe they released this on the Game Boy or something. They released a game called uh-huh. Super Mario Brothers. The it was like the lost levels. The lost or levels. Something. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. Yeah. That uh-huh. is Super Mario Brothers Two. That's the original Super Mario Brothers Two. That exact game. <laughs> Um, but people found that it was too hard. They released it in Japan and they found that it was too hard and it wasn't exciting because it was the same, it was the exact same graphics and the exact same gameplay. So they, uh, someone at Nintendo had the, the brilliant idea to just remap an already built game, Doki Doki Panic, <laughs> and just to put in the princess, Toadstool, Luigi and Mario and change a few of the characters. But that, what's funny about that is that there are characters from that game that became, you know, well-known Mario characters, like the bombs <laughs> those came from oh, Super yeah. Mario Brothers too, and essentially Doki huh. Doki Panic. So it's an interesting and weird story, but I was obsessed with Super Mario Brothers too. And to me that felt like, yeah, this is a, this is what an evolution of a game looks like. It's similar, yeah. but different. And uh, it felt like a new Mario experience. And then, of course, I think they nailed it as good as they were ever going to get it with a Mario game with Super Mario Brothers 3. I think that's widely Classic. regarded as the, the best video game like of nice, all time. It felt like a nice blend between the two as well. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. They they had some holdovers, yeah. like some of those characters. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, anywho, good classic stuff. Uh, any uh, Anything else before we get on to my little game here? Do you have more, Lau? I'll let you go if you want to. No, I'm good. I'm just... Oh, okay. I had a story to share that I've been holding on to for a bit, uh, and I, it, it can be kind of short, but it just, uh, I'd say, what are you, what's going on, buddy? You okay? Okay. He's <laughs> slapping his tummy, drinking chocolate milk, saying, I'm full. Uh, <laughs> Sounds like the good life. It's not bad. Uh, okay. I wanted to talk about, and this may be something we've spoken about uh, in years past, but I stumbled on this quick little story about the death of Gary Hoy. Uh, now, Gary Hoy died in 1993. Uh, he was a lawyer at a law firm in Toronto, and he worked on the 24th floor of a big uh, skyscraper there. And one of Gary's favorite things to do was whenever they were giving tours to uh, students or like, uh, what, what do you call it, interns that would come through the building, mm-hmm. he had a little party trick that he would do. He would, uh, he, knowing that the windows in his office were unbreakable, he would run and throw his body I at full strength against the window. Yeah, <laughs> we we might have covered it, but I, again, but I, so, but he, so he would run and like throw his body against the window, and everyone would scream and freak out, thinking he was trying to kill himself. And he'd be like, "Aha, sorry, you know, these are unbreakable windows. Isn't that something neat?" So one day, you know, they were bringing a, a group of. Hold on, just a sec. 
<laughs> Shut up! <laughs> okay, and where was I? <laughs> smack, smack, smack. <laughs> no, um, I'm very patient. I'm like Logan. If you don't shut the fuck up. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. So uh, one day they were bringing some interns through, and Gary went up and you know did his usual spiel where he went and threw his body against the window. Nothing happened. The students screamed. He had a good laugh about it. So, you know, explained that you know these windows are unbreakable. It's you know the way they've structured them. It's just impossible to do. Went back for a second bite of the apple then to prove his point, and lo and behold. <laughs> the window frame around the glass gave out, and that motherfucker fell 24 floors to his death in front of a terrified group of students. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I this remember. would go, this would go on to be shown in shows like MythBusters and Thousands, uh, Thousand Ways to Die, and he uh, eventually was recognized with the Darwin Award even in 1996. But what a way, man! What a way to go. What was the MythBusters angle? Just seeing how many, like, was it? I, was a theory I, that he just did it too many times and he loosened the window like each time. I'm I mean, that sure makes I sense. I, saw that. I just saw it on the Wikipedia, but it wasn't the glass that broke. It was the frame holding the glass. Couldn't, uh, couldn't withstand. <laughs> the, I shouldn't laugh, but I mean, come on, dude. You Jesus, have to. It's, I mean, it's like, insane. It is, the glass is unbreakable, yeah. but we didn't think about the frame holding it in yeah. or the body that, uh, I always think about these sort of things is like, imagine <laughs> what was going through his head when suddenly he was no longer in his skyrise apartment, but in open air, and uh, oh shit, it didn't work this time. I, I, I can only <laughs> surmise what that must feel like. That's right. Oh Imagine, wow! Like being injected with pure, <laughs> thinking, pure oh, liquid wow. regret. <laughs> to his death. Oh wow! <laughs> the needle of liquid regret right. to your heart. And uh, like. he didn't have to freak out long. Well, a couple seconds. I'm well, this think. is new. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Unexpected. But yeah, he did it so many times, apparently. <laughs> yeah, he was very comfortable like, with uh, with doing it. Uh, I got to look up what the Mythbusters thing was. Yeah. I'm curious what they learned because for me, it would be like, why did it work so many times? And then it didn't. I, I think the obvious science would be, he bumped. He bonked it loose. <laughs> yeah, I mean the the, the glass was th- structurally there, but Those the uh, frame interns. holding it together. Yeah, the second bite of the apple really took him to, to found the, down there. Got greedy. The 2022 yep. version, it would be uh, emotional damage. Is this small? <laughs> <laughs> and physical splat. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of both. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um. Yeah, that's a that's a story that just it it semi haunts me and it frustrates me and then it's like Jesus, dude, what we like? I yeah. just I, mean, I don't you know. Did it yourself? <laughs> what are you gonna yeah. fucking do? Yeah, crazy, mm-hmm. crazy shit. R.I.P. I suppose. Uh, if nothing <laughs> else, hopefully it uh, keeps other people from doing this little party trick. You know, because that, yeah. he couldn't have been the only one. Oh God, those poor kids, though. Like, that's can you what imagine? Thinking it's like. They're, yeah. they they got to be scarred for life. Just seeing, oh, just watching yeah. that. Like, dude, check this out, and then he's just gone. <laughs> and you're like, See, that uh, was stupid, uh huh, and real. And you just got to process that. They had to have, they had to have looked over the edge, right? I mean, what would yeah, you do I mean, in that well, situation? I, would you just like get the fuck like, out? Was of that part like, of the trick? Like, is he is he dangling from a rope? That's exactly it. You'd have to see. Is there a lanai? <laughs> is he hanging out uh, on the balcony? You'd have to look over, and then you would either see him hit or see him uh, destroyed. And uh, I mean, I think that's what we'd all do, right? You'd run over. I, I would. I mean, yeah, twenty-four would floor, be. twenty-four floors. He'd probably be pretty tiny at the bottom there. Like, oh, yeah, I don't. You'd yeah. See. I don't even think we have definitely a building see that he tall. He wasn't hanging out on a rope or something. You'd be like, oh well, no, he's gone. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> confirmed. Is it Star Wars? Is he? <laughs> <laughs> Feel the hate, Gary. Feel the hate. Yeah. Hold your insights in with the sheer hatred force. I should have hated as I fell. Oh. <laughs> yeah, hopefully none of his family is listening. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, crazy fucking story. Well, uh, on to my elimination game. I'm excited to see how you guys do with this. This is the... I went a few different ways today, and I decided that this might be the most interesting. This is the coolest 
actors. Now, this list is only men. I'd like to do something similar down the road with uh, women, but no women are appearing on this. So I'm guessing they just wanted actors, uh, male actors. Uh, By the way, I always wonder, I don't hear the term actress used all that much, even by female actors. I think most actors just want to be called an actor. I wonder what yeah, most female right. actors think of the word actress. It's it's almost like kind of like it could be offensive. <laughs> you know, it's like, why do we have to have a separate word? We're doing the same thing you're doing. It's an actor. And there doesn't seem to be anything yeah, male centric the in the word actor. Uh, anyway, this is the coolest actors of all time. And Ooh. Um, some classics, some new, some a little odd. And some surprises here, I think. And this is voted on the people. Uh, over 100,000 people voted on Ranker. Uh, and this was as recently as 2021. So it's a pretty fresh list. Sorry, let me grab my pen. <laughs> I made homemade pizza today for dinner. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it don't pass me. I'm just <laughs> fresh and clean. Isn't that pretty? Mm. One of those grandma pies. You ever make one of those grandma pies? Okay. So, uh, what's that? (laughs) Oh, I made pizza tonight. I made uh, what they call a Detroit pizza or like a grandma pie. You do it in a square. Mm. Square pie. I mean, no no wrong pizza in my book. I know we've talked about the pineapple and pizza controversy. I am fully pro. Yeah, you and John Mark, I think, didn't like it. Christopher and I loved it. Mm -hmm. Knock it off. Oh, so Let me me grab a sweet, juicy. I got a... Grab me a truly. Hold on. Pause. Right. I'll be t- t- 10 seconds. Back. Crack that bitch open. One, no, I'm telling two, you. Three. I don't Uh-oh. like Wait. I don't like pineapple on all pizza. Absolutely. have this conversation with you. <laughs> pe- pepperoni and pineapple. Thank you. Little black olive. That's my favorite pizza of all time. I, I made, do like uh, ham and pineapple, but pepperoni and pineapple is where it's fucking at. Spicy. Man. Salt my pepperoni. kid's getting. My kid's getting really into games and pinball right now. He's doing this thing. So I have a pinball machine in my living room. Uh, I've rented one. And he is doing something that we call trapping up. It's a really core pinball skill. It's where you actually hold the ball with the flipper. You know, you like stop yeah. the ball and you can see, take a moment. You take a moment and kind of pick out your next shot. But that is a really important part of like learning how to actually play pinball. And I didn't teach him. He just started watching me do it. Hmm. And now he's like doing it. He's like, look, daddy, I'm trapping up. And I'm like, oh my God, you are trapping up. Shit. Could anything make you proud? (laughs) He's a pinball wizard. Yeah, he's Uh, great. All right. I'm here. I'm present. I've got a true. (sighs) All right. Let's do this. So we're going to go in this order. We're going to go Lyle first. Put Christopher right in the taint. Mm. And taking up the caboose is John... F and Mark. Perfect. <coughs> now remember, hey, this is coolest actors of all time. So uh, let's see where you guys take us. We got the top 25 here. 25 is worth one point. Number one is worth 25. And so on and such. Lyle, what you feeling? What's your first guess? Coolest actor I'd of like all time. I'd like to tell you, Ron, one thing. You must stop <laughs> with pauses. When you do the crystal walking, walking. Well, he's walking already. It's 50 50. Is this going to be John Travolta or a little bit of Christopher Walk? A little Christopher Walkinson. Walker? Walkinson. Going with Christopher Walk- Christopher Walkinson. <laughs> wow, what like you were, that was like a, first first choice, yeah. a Winnie the Pooh, uh, Chris Walken. He's cool. <laughs> mix he's up there. cool as hell, Chris. Well, Lyle's not alone in thinking that Christopher Walkinson is cool because. Well, that is number six on this Dang. list. Can you believe that? Christopher Walken, I number six? Be Lyle. I didn't think Walken would be on that list. Yeah, I was kind of surprised. Oh, I can believe it. I, 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 on the list, sure, but number six oh. might have surprised me. But that puts Lyle in cool runnings with 20 yeah. right off the bat. Good guess. All right, good job, Lyle. Uh, I got to go with my heart here and go with Clune Dog, George Clooney. George Clooney is not on the top 25. Ooh, wow. Starting off with a big... You know, I think oh, wow. if, I think wow. handsome actors or witty, funny, charming, definitely charming, but cool. You know, do you really think... Well, it's a fair guess. It's definitely a fair guess. But Man. not on this list. Christopher Walken. Cooler than Walken. George Clooney. <laughs> George Clooney. By at least 20... Points. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
All right. Okay. Uh, yep. Big whiff. Oh, that that could cost you. Uh, okay, John Mike. Long, uh, lot of game uh, left though. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> take a stab in the dark and say James Dean. And that was James a good Dean, Dean is a really, really good guess. And he was on so many of these lists, including sexiest actors of all time or sexiest people of all time. Not on the top 25. What the mm. fuck, dude? Well, yeah, keep in mind, list. this was, this was yeah. a poll done in 2021. That doesn't mean mm. that there aren't some classics here, but... Um, Wow. But, yeah, uh, I, I think if this was done uh, 20, 30 years ago, you'd have to put James Dean on there. But Screw with my math. We're weird with our uh, what we can retain. And uh, and this is Ranker also. you got to think about the, sort of the demographic. But I don't want that to throw you either because there are plenty of straight-up classics. Like, I think most of this list makes a lot of sense. But I think the the surprises that I mentioned – are the ones that aren't on the list as opposed to the ones that are. Mm. Um, if that, it doesn't really help, but all your classics are mostly here. Uh, okay. Well, that was a good break for Christopher because, uh, yeah, that just Lordy. puts Lyle out in the lead here with 20 and, uh, top well, he, five he led with walking. Where's he going next is what I want to know. Walking to now, you know, yeah, you know, there was a film in 1986 starring this man and he decided he didn't want to go to school. And he was going to take the day off. I'm going with Ferris Bueller, Mr. Matthew Veronica. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, an actor I would be like, that was a cool motherfucker, Matthew Brown. First Christopher yeah, Walkinson dude, and now right. Matthew yeah. Bronigan. Bronigan. I'm going to give it to you because it's not on the list. <laughs> Damn you, sons of bitches. Man. Matthew Broderick, uh, uh, coolest cool actor of all time. Dude. Well, again, this that in the eighties. Yeah, I mean, fuck I mean, yeah, he was one of the biggest cool. guys. I don't know. Yeah, Ferris Bueller was well, the epitome of cool. Yeah, I mean, even the. I'm, I'm still ahead of you guys. It's okay. That's true. Shut up. Yeah, you can afford that one. <laughs> I got one to burn. Uh, oh God, there's so many I want to pick here, but I'm really thrown off by this list. I'm gonna go with Brad Pitt. I think he's one of the coolest fucking actors we've had. Come on. Hmm. Boy, again, I think sexiest. Mm-hmm. Um, good actor. Yeah, you never know. It could be a different list. But on this list, he was 26. Just, oh, just wow. shy of making the list. Yeah. But, you know, I don't know. I think of a couple of movies where I think Brad Pitt's the cool guy. Often, you know, he's just kind of a character. Like Fight Club, obviously, that's the badass. Um, yeah. Where else was he a cool guy? I thought he was pretty good. Good in uh, Ocean's Eleven, those movies. He was fucking hilarious sure. in those movies. And I think those Interview movies are the Vampire. <clears throat> Meet Joe Black. Yeah, well, that's a good poll. <laughs> Joe Black. By Meet Cook. Joe Black. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Interview with the Vampire, movie. definitely. Uh, yeah. Uh, was, what about uh, oh, Benjamin you, that, Button? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Moving on. Let's see. I think you're proving my point now. I'm talking myself out of it. I'm talking myself out of it. All right. Uh, the curious case of Brad. True Benjamin, romance. Brad Pitt. Yeah, he's smoking out of a. He's smoking pot out of a honey bear. But see, How that's cool so that? condescend. Condescend me, motherfucker. So much, yeah, that's, that is pretty great. But so much of his career are little oddball characters like that. Fight Club. Get he just fucked. pops up. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm he's saying. So, Fight Club is the epitome yeah. of his coolness. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, so that's another whiff. Interesting. John Mark got a chance to uh, pull ahead here to get one of these Man, top fibers. I've, I've got three names in mind, but I'm going all kinds mm. of different ways because it's like, well, what's what's cool? cool? But I'm gonna gotta, gotta start with I'm, walking. I'm, from there. I'm gonna go. I, yeah, you gotta start with walking. I'm gonna go with someone who I think is fucking cool. I don't care if he's on this list or not, but he, I think he's the, one of the coolest guys and played some of the coolest characters in film history, and that is Bill Paxton. Oh, oh great These call. are interesting polls you guys are given, and very personal. I think you need to broaden this up a bit more and think in terms of the overall pub. No, yeah, I think uh, some, in no, terms of bullshit. Okay. No Bill Paxton. You know, there are a few names on this list that I would say are in that realm. Um, that, that that's not a clue so much as uh, to say that you're not, you know, that's not a crazy guess. Um, but not in this list, you know. 
Mm, we're, okay. Most of these guys are like the big, you know, the big boys, the big time right. boys. I mean, you know, Bill, Bill yeah, Paxton I mean, had Paxton some, had his moments. And... <laughs> More of a genre <laughs> actor, though. Uh, uh, and okay. he's a beloved to us because he was in some of our favorite films. But I don't know if the general public feels that way. Um, I'm bringing so it. another way. You know how Boy. I feel about the general public, Ron? I, uh -huh. I feel like I might, but tell us all the all the same. Yeah. yeah, people sure. are dumb as shit. Um, all right, Lyle, you are still shining with your one all right. right. We have one right guess and two rounds. Right. We're a little bit farther back in time. We're going to bring it back closer to the future. I'm going to go with 1980 or 1998. Mm -hmm. Jeff Bridges with the dude, <laughs> the big oh. boots. You know, this is again. <laughs> he didn't quite make the list. He was, I think, 26 or something. Really cool, man. But yeah. okay. We got the Big Lebowski, sure. Mm -hmm. But he's cool in a specific way. Uh, and as big as that movie is, it's still one of those movies that not everybody has seen it. And it's like, well, think of some other Jeff Bridges movies. Guys are losing. He's not really known <laughs> for playing super cool characters. You know what I mean? Okay, cool. Like he's a, he was an oddball Glenn. alien in uh, Starman and super drunk alcoholic uh, country star you know think of a lot of his other movies and uh, i don't know washed up video game designer at the same time i wouldn't what movie is that tron oh yeah dur yeah but he, <laughs> yeah he got to shine in tron again i would not have been su surprised to see jeff bridges on this list i think he's cool as hell in person but i don't know that he's known for being a cool character in most movies um, good guess though, but didn't get you anything. This is interesting. You guys still have God, a, this is fucking awful. after all this, you got one guess puts yeah. you in, in the lead. All right, I'm gonna go with something topical and say Johnny Depp. Johnny oh. Depp was one of my surprises. He is on the list, <sighs> but barely. This is wild. He's down at twenty three. Um <sighs> and that gives you three points. Yeah. That I, was that was another that that was another one I was debating too. I, I was, was baffled like, oh. by that one too. But but yeah. this you said this was last year, right? So that, I was that wondering point. if he was his star was starting to shine and maybe this controversy yeah. was starting to yeah. make its way out. That it had to be, right? Because I think yeah, he's pretty even if you don't think of his characters as being like cool guy characters, they're often oddball weirdos. But he's cool as hell, and uh, the the category is coolest actors. But I think most people it, are going by it, the characters it, they play. Is it is it cool actors or is it cool actors who play cool characters? Like, what's nah. this is the distinction that I'm having a hard time. Will we ever know the difference? I don't think you're going to argue with a lot of the people on the list. I think that well, no, that's I, the no, point I don't to make. So, but it's so I like... don't know. I don't know what people had it. I'm probably. A, I'm sure it's a hybrid of both. I can tell you this. There, it, well, no, I'm not going to give you any clues yet. We're still early in the game, and we got uh, we got a time. We got we got a time left. Uh, all right, John Mark, think broad here and uh, you know, classic. Oh, oh, Harrison Ford. There you go. There yeah. you go. And just like Fuck that, off. you're in the lead. Really? Because that was number three. Oh, Harrison oh Ford God. is cool as hell. Blade Runner, cool fucking character. Han Solo, one of the coolest characters in the yeah, universe. Indiana Jones, whatever. Indiana fucking Jones, get out of the city, son. And even mm. if those are the only movies he made, <laughs> there were six of each. So <laughs> it's like, you know, he, he got he got a lot of mileage out of those characters. So, well, uh, we named the dog Andy. <laughs> all right, now it's getting interesting because Lyle is in second with 20, Christopher with three. We still have four of the top five, so this could this could be anybody's game. Um, so yeah, this uh, is about time. I pull out the heavy gloves. Was it? There, there was a movie, and he's just a badass motherfucker. Period. There was a movie where he played as an undercover cop. Mm -hmm. That's pretty broad. I'm, I'm going with Denzel Washington. Holy oh. shit! He's a cool motherfucker. You know, I gotta say, I was very skeptical that you guys would guess number one yeah. but lyle just guessed yeah. number motherfucking wow. one denzel yes. washington coolest actor of all time 25 fucking points jesus really? christ lyle He's nobody so knows cool like lyle apparently because walking and and washington would not have been my two top choices <laughs> i would never have gotten to denzel washington i don't know why wow. um hmm. he's cool as hell and plays some kick-ass characters 
but uh, I don't think I would have gotten there, and I'm, I'm yeah, impressed. Uh, Forty-five, Lyle. <sighs> All right, oh, and uh, well to, to Christopher's three, but you listen. We still have number two, number four, number five. Plenty, plenty and, of game left, and here. you could easily take the lead here. John Mark certainly I wanted, can. I want to. I want to do something a bit more classic. I, I feel like it's going to whiff, but one of the coolest people, iconically cool, would be Steve McQueen. Ooh, that's a good guess. Um, not on this list, but that is oh, a that God. is a good guess. I don't think that's a name as many people know these days, maybe, but certainly growing mm. up and yeah, I mean Steve McQueen was the shit. Still is. You go back and watch those movies, those are some badass movies. But uh again, there are people that I would consider sort of peers of that time and peers of that uh ilk of movies. So it wasn't a mm. bad guess, just didn't net you any points. All right. I'm going to have to stay at three for now, but you still got time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We'll see what John I'm, Mark I'm really here. waffling hard between two names right now. Like, mm-hmm. oh, shit. Um, but I'm going to have to Dal- go with uh, Dustin Diamond and uh... <laughs> <laughs> number two, 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 two. How'd you guess? No, I'm going to go, I'm gonna have to go with, uh, with one of these. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> that was enjoyable. I'm gonna have to go with one of these over the other. Okay. And say Clint Eastwood. Oh, Ooh, man. well, you know, way too low on the list for my liking because I agree, but he is on the list at 21 with five points, so that gets you uh, up to 28. Not a whiff, um, but yeah, should be way higher. Dude, how 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 is he at 21? Like, if you think about cool, like forget his politics or whatever the fuck he's doing these days. Just throughout his history, I know. the movies he's been in, the characters he's played, his persona, like fucking cool. coolest. The, he's the definition right? of cool. Come the on, Duke cool man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm with you. I'm with you 100 percent on that one. Um, but it was on the list. So, so this guy, this this guy, has been in just numerous, numerous movies, and he's pretty fucking cool. And it and it, he's got a little theme song for his new movie. <laughs> And it goes do 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 do. You know what that is? Tom Cruise. That's Tom Cruise. That's Tom Cruise, baby. Interesting. Not on the list. Wow. Fuck Lyle. No. Let's see. I think people don't like it because he's a Scientologist. I think there's something. There may be something to that because his. He has played quite a few cool characters, but I don't know. This is, goes back to John Mark's question. It's like, well, of course, we don't know what was in people's heads. I don't think a lot of us really consider Tom Cruise to be cool. He's pretty cool. But his characters were well, in the his fucking characters 80s. characters are cool. Sure shit was. Yeah, not that cool, though. Fucking Maverick, yeah. bro. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't I think got he's, he's a, a fucking kind of a weirdo. Weirdo, yeah. <laughs> All right, I think I got it. I think okay. I got it, guys. You need it. Girls want to fuck him. Guys want to be him. I'm talking about Crazy Swayze. Patrick Swayze. He's got to be on this list. Oh, he's not on the Rabbit list. Pottery. This <laughs> is wild. I was, this, is, uh, this is crazy. I was rooting, dancing. I was rooting rap, for rap, you. Rap, rap. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think Patrick Swayze has a funny kind of genre movie um, following these days, even though he's not a genre movie guy. It's just like it, it's not a name I hear I've people talking about. Brad Pitt. Crazy Swayze, Clune Dog. None of these guys are on the coolest. <laughs> what, what world am I living in? Back, me, back off your me. mic just a little bit, Chris. Again, I, I can't. I'm angry. <laughs> it's it's appropriate. Help. But listen, no. if this was sexiest actors, I'm I'm sure both of those would have been on the list. Uh, <laughs> you know, most popular, most cool. successful. He's so cool. He stitches himself up in a bathroom after getting into a fight. <laughs> I can't stand for this. I yeah, know. Well, sit down because hey, we got a long game to go. <laughs> Want me to help you on that one, Ron? It goes like this. It goes, not on the list. On the, 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 on you, the way you framed it, you know, of course, this that yeah. could be for any of these guys. But there's one that I, yeah. oh, I, I, he nailed it. He nailed it. He's got number two. But uh, then you, uh, uh, we Swayze did. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm I'm hoping for number two here. 
No. Um, and I can't believe nobody <laughs> said this yet because I was like, wait, how did I just now think of this name? Mm-hmm. Um, and this is one of uh, this is somebody who's played, I think, some of the coolest characters in film history. And also, I think, is honestly probably one of the coolest people alive, and that is Keanu Reeves. There you go. Uh, yeah. All right. Good yeah. one. All right. We got Good some one. Keanu on here somewhere. Not super high on the list, but you're inching back up. Number 16, which gets you 10 points. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, definitely uh, has both played cool characters. Uh, a weird career, actually, if you think about Keanu Reeves. He's he's had quite a uh, breadth of characters. But uh, he's right there, close to the middle. Not bad. So that brings you to 38. Lyle's 45. Christopher is in a tight spot here, but we still have three of the top five. If Christopher gets two of those, Uh, he's in the lead. Uh, It's actually two because I got it right here. You ready for it? Let's do it. What you talking about? I bet you can't guess how many shots I fired. (laughs) Was it six? Might have been. I don't. I bet. I bet you weren't listening to Clint. John Mark's guess a couple rounds ago. <laughs> Clint Eastwood. Yeah, I already guessed that. Yeah, he guessed you that. Did? Oh man! I I'll give you. Will. I'll give you another chance. Disqualified. He's out. <laughs> he was super low. God damn it. Yeah, he. Oh, you know what? I'm not thinking about him. I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about John Wayne. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? <laughs> John Wayne. No. Different Dirty Harry. John He's Wayne. John Wayne not on this list. Yeah. You know, paint me a wagon. Come on. Paint me wagon. Of all the movies, paint your wagon. The musical. <laughs> okay. But I'm giving you guys a chance. Okay? That is absolutely what it is because, Christopher, you. now you have three of the top five wide open and a I, Lyle I, whiff to give you an, a great opportunity here. You can do this. I think I- says a lot about who I am as a person and uh, why I am not as cool as I think I am. (laughs) But (laughs) I'm going to go with somebody that's done a little prison time, perhaps, but also went on to have an incredible fucking career and is beloved and went on to be like the biggest Marvel fucking cinematic star we have. And I'm going to say Robert Downey Jr. Now you're talking. He's right. uh, He's in there. This gets you some points. He's at number 11. And I think if this was done a few years ago, that would have been higher. You know, he was like just uh, all the rage. I think maybe uh, people got a little tired of him because suddenly it was like every fucking movie coming out was going to have Robert Downey Jr. in it. But uh, that gets you up to 18, so it's not as dire, but you're definitely going to need one of them top threes and maybe another whiff or two from Lyle. But uh, we'll see what happens. What's John Mark got cooking? Mm, (laughs) It's funny that you said that. Um, Got a couple names. That I've been thinking of one of them I don't really want to say because I'm not really like that into this person as an actor or think that they're that cool <laughs> but my taste you know my taste is not the general yeah don't go with you so. <laughs> um, uh, shit coolest um, okay well seeing as how this seems to be a more recent skewing list I'm going to go with uh, The Rock Oh, Wayne Johnson. That's, a, great that's, that's a great guess. But that is not on the list. But I do. Wow. Good. I do have a correction. <laughs> uh, Lyle, was it you that guessed Jeff Bridges? Was. I'm wrong. That He was on the list. He was just hiding down there. So what you get, you get uh, four more points. He was at 22. So Thanks you are sir. now wow. at 49. Bullshit. Not, not that you needed those extra points, but no. fair's fair. Because I got number two. Fucking correction we needed. Are you ready for number two? All right. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do two. It's uh, it goes a little something like, uh, don't do it, Somerset. Don't look into the box. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God! Are you gonna tell me that fucking he's gonna be on this list and Brad Pitt fucking he's eight? Cool as shit. I Morgan need, Freeman. He's cool, dude. he's cool, man. I need you to say the name. <laughs> Morgan Freeman. <laughs> oh, Chris, you're gonna love this. Morgan Freeman, number four. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> I, quit. I quit the podcast. This uh, come on. The People love, everybody loves Morgan Freeman so much that this he's just like a wild. meme of coolness. Did, uh, did Lyle write this list and you're fucking with me right now? <laughs> he likes it like it. He's had a few whiffs, but his guess has have been great. So that takes you to, good Lord, you are now oh at, let's see, 40. Infinity. You are oh, Jesus. at Jesus. You guys can 71. <laughs> I don't think they can. There. Well, here's the thing: we still have number two and number five. If Christopher 
if Lyle whiffs a few times and Christopher gets both those, you're back in it. Or John uh, Mark, he could he can definitely uh, pull ahead here still. So Chris, you desperately need one of those top I've never, fivers. I've never felt John Mark's anger so distinctly as I do right now. Um, <laughs> you guys don't. Every, you guys aren't feeling shit. Morgan Freeman in the top five. He wasn't number one, no, but no. he was he was in the top five. Shitty me. Oh um, God. Okay. Uh, That's fair. Your anger is fair. <laughs> I'm going to go with something a bit more modern because I'm out of fucking ideas at this point. Interesting. Uh, somebody I think is cool as fuck, and I'm going to say Jason Momoa. Not on this list. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah I just can't. Yeah, yeah I yeah. think <laughs> we're, we're, we're in more classic territory for the most part, and uh, so Momoa, yeah. Is, uh, there's a few newbies still on here, but more, more timeless the rest of the list. That might mm. that might be your last whiff though. We'll see. <laughs> that you mm. that's gonna matter. We'll we'll see what happens. If Lyle if Lyle gets a whiff or a smaller one down here, you still got a couple chances because but we gotta get out I'm of here. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with something that um was alluded to perhaps inadvertently earlier and say Sean Connery. Oh number yes. two with a yes. bullet. Ah. You know, here's well, here, here's hard. why I needed Lyle Take to take him down. <laughs> to confirm his impersonation because I thought he was doing John Connery. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like, but then I was like, I don't remember that being a Bond line. Um, yeah. All right, 24 fucking points. So that gives John uh, Mark, uh, let's see, 62. Oh, we got it. Chris, You, I know we're right at eight, but are you good for just a couple more rounds? See if... He I'm can, good. Let's. He can, I, he can I'm get a fighting chance. I'm gonna see it through. I don't think you have a prayer at this point, unless you do a, cl- a clean up. sweep. But <laughs> John Mark definitely has a shot. I should let, give him a couple more tries here. Um, but let's see what happens with Lau. He could seal the deal here if he gets number five. The coolest guy I know in movie history mm-hmm. might be the man from what is it? Uh, Uncle Takashimo Taka Towers or whatever. Crawling through the ductworks and oh. come out to the coast and get together have a few laughs. <laughs> oh yes, Bruce Willis. He's you know cool that is such a good guess, and he's not on the top twenty-five. Really? Wow, wow that's crazy. Yeah, not wow, on the crazy. top twenty-five. And I would, yeah. I would say that he's played plenty of cool characters, and most people think that's that he's absolutely. a cool guy himself. He's always charming yeah. and witty. He's and Bruno, come on. Yeah, <laughs> Hudson Hawk out of the city. Huh. No. Well, that's a good whiff for John Mark. Eh, might make Christopher feel a little good if he gets number five. Um, don't know that he will, but uh, let's see. Is it my uh, turn? Yeah. No. Oh. Yeah, it is. I'm going to go with uh, Stallone. Ooh, um, not on this list, but boy, you are... Jesus you are fucking Christ. You know, I, I'm hesitant to say that you're getting closer because you are and you aren't, but that's, 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 that's a pretty good guess. <laughs> this is so generational, too. This is wild. It's fucking wild. All right, John Mark, this is your chance. <laughs> Lyle Wift, uh, Chris Wift, uh, you can pull okay. ahead here with number five. You know, I don't know. Okay, so this is this is this is a stab in the dark, but <sighs> Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm, again, I think in a different time in a different place, I could have been uh, could have been on this list for sure. But no, wow. no Schwarzenegger, no Schwarzenegger on this. That's list. crazy, man. Well, fucking Ranker, some man. Of the greatest characters ever. Yeah, it's hit and miss. Ranker is hit and miss with how yeah, identifiable. Jingle all the way it is. really took me there. I'm excited to read yeah, these back to you and see what you guys on, think, though. I think I think yeah. you're gonna I think you're gonna feel most of this list, but all the ones that you guys are like bemoaning about not being on here, for the most part, I agree with. And uh, Clinton Dog. That's why I still I still know about George Clooney. He's he's great. He's funny. He's charming. Dog. I just don't know if I consider on, charming so to be the same cool. as cool. You know, like cool, like a b- badass kind of guy. He's confident, and he's yeah, uh, he's cool. I, Swayze, it's, it's fair. It's definitely come on. fair. Swayze, I don't feel as much. I don't know. Swayze, Roadhouse so he's, again, well, Parker. Roadhouse for sure. Up up in the bathroom. <laughs> but Ghost, you know, just kind of a dude. Even uh, Ghost, he was kind of a badass. Uh, he ended up. Be, he ended up being a badass. badass. Oh. Um, Point Break. Point Break. He was way yeah, cool yeah, Keanu in that movie. Come okay. on. I'm Listen, an FBI agent. I'm, not, I'm definitely not dying on this hill. I, I think that Patrick <laughs> Swayze was a, a fair call. I, I, I do think that Brad Pitt was a fair call. These are cool. I think a lot of people find these characters and the the actors themselves to be interesting human beings. Uh, to yeah. some degree, anyway. Uh, okay, John Mark, but this... Oh, did you just guess? No. 
All right. It's my this turn. Is, this is a big oh. guess. Oh, fucking hell. Um, oh, you did just guess. You wait. Who did I? Did you guess no, I, Sylvester? I, 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 said, I, said, I said Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Or so I guess it's Lyle's turn again. Okay. Sorry. So turn. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with a guy. Uh, <laughs> 1990s. He was a. Famous, take it back here. Famous car runner. He was a famous uh, treasure hunter. He was uh, a lot of things, but I'm. I'm going to go with Nick Cage. Hmm. Yeah. Nick Cage not on the list. I think his career yeah. is too crazy what? to be considered. He was too cool for the, the list. coolest yeah. actors. I think he's had one of the kookiest careers, but yeah, I don't know. I'm of two minds about that one. I wouldn't mind seeing him down at like number 12, you know, but I also don't mind not seeing him on, uh, especially when you when you compare it to this list, which I know you guys don't see, but. He was kind of like the 90s James Dean. Kind of. Oh, boy, them's fighting words oh. for somebody. But again, and not a hill I'm willing James. to die on. James died. This is also yeah. relative, okay. too. All right. Chris, you still got a chance well, at ceiling number five and not uh, uh, walking away with a, a battle wound here. Uh, I'm going to go with Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> Interesting. No, not on this list. That is, a, I think, a great guess. I uh, Another <sighs> example. Kooky, weirdo characters, but cool. And who doesn't love him in real life? Like, or, or any like cool picture dude. him shirtless, you know, talking about dinosaurs <laughs> and chaos theories. Come on, <laughs> it's no. a good guess, but no, no, Jeff Goldblum on this. Yeah. Interesting. This is this has been interesting. Okay, we'll we'll do one more. We'll give John Mark one more chance to catch up here, and uh, then we'll call it. I'm really struggling at this point to mm-hmm. think of. What's cool? Who's yeah. cool? Um, especially in this rarefied air that we're now swimming in. Um, let's see. Um, I, read the list. I just don't know what the kids these days are into. I, that's uh, not the right way to go <laughs> with this list. I don't think it's the kids. No. I, I, I don't know what it is. I, I feel like it's probably people about our age or maybe a little older, honestly. Yeah, but 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 all the shit that we've guessed is not even on the list, and it's like, what? You're, if you're our age, then anyways. <clears throat> okay, so let's get serious here. Let's yeah. get real. Um, <clears throat> Mark Hamill. <laughs> He's pretty cool. Right? He's pretty cool. I love it. It's from the heart. But he is no. cool. He's a cool dude. He's, cool <laughs> He's cool. He's cool as hell. He's cool Ready? as shit. Listen, he was not he, on he the was list. My... Not on the list. Not on the 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 I get it. I get it, Lyle. Okay, okay could you do it. that one more time while we go through the list or the, go through the uh, score here? Because Lyle is the winner with 71. Christopher well done, Lyle. is in the last place spot. Yeah with 18 give us a little 18 and i want i want to there, make Lyle. it known that i usually not on the list pretty well at these not lists on, i usually on. am a strong you've been contender. winning on the not on the not on the not and john mark a respectable true. second with 62 you guys actually did pretty this was hard but uh i always wonder how i would have done with it i probably wouldn't have guessed some of these but let's go through the list Number Are twenty. We doing All right. No, we doing- no, uh, we got to get on out of here, and I think oh, we gave we gave everyone <laughs> enough chances here. So twenty five, Tom Hanks. What? Not Listen, actor. yeah, a, okay. a sweetheart right. of an actor, but he's a nice guy. Turner it, and Hooch at, at twenty five. Okay, I feel like it's fair. Twenty five is fine. Yeah, like, we're slow. not talking about uh, number three here, but uh, <laughs> the next one may be a, little, a bit more debatable. Tommy Lee Jones. I think uh, he's cool as hell, and I think he's always cool as hell in movies. Uh, but see, this is how I think sure, the, sure, the bulk of this list is going to go. It's like, yeah, no, oh, okay. Well, yeah, that. I'm surprised none of you guessed this guy, but I expected him to be way higher on the list in my esteem. Jack fucking Nicholson. Oh, he's pretty oh, yeah, he's I cool. think yeah, that's he's cool as hell, but answer. also a little crazy and kooky and creepy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that might uh, slay, you know, sway it. It might sway it off the list, if you will. Another yeah. actor who was cool as shit, and I'm surprised it didn't come up, but I probably wouldn't have got there. Liam Neeson. Yeah, he's cool. Okay. Cool as fuck. Cool. Now, the the ultimate cool, in my opinion, and we're talking classic, classic here, 
Number 18, Humphrey Bogart. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. And 17, again, cool as fuck. No matter how you slice it, the antithesis to come out to the coast, have a few laughs, Alan Rickman coming in at number 17. Hmm, Uh, interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. Up next was Keanu Reeves at 16. Number 15, Robert De Niro. At one point, he was about as cool as it got. And in some of the coolest fucking characters and most badass intimidating just fucking badass characters so that totally Mm -hmm. plays especially around 15 maybe that's even a little bit low one going back classic again no one really talks about this guy all that much these days but a huge actor in his time robert redford oh Uh, he's cool as fuck okay definitely cool as fuck 13 this is an oddball one but I bet that I would wager that most of the ladies voted for uh, most of the votes were from the ladies because ladies love them some Michael Caine. He is a cool oh, motherfucker, shitty. and he always plays these Michael super Ryan, wit- Blades. witty characters, and he's just lovable. <laughs> but uh, that Mark's laugh. it's an oddball one. Yeah, well, I was surprised to see that one. Uh, not too Look, surprised. House, not terribly surprised <laughs> to see number twelve, Hugh Jackman. Oh, yeah, he's cool. Uh, okay. Pretty good one. I mean, yeah. Wolverine really was one of the coolest it's cinematic Clune characters. Dog. In a long Clune time. Dog couldn't make the list. Clune Dog couldn't get on there. Sorry, bro. <laughs> gotta get, we got to move past this. <laughs> this is going to come up in therapy, isn't it? I'm going, I was just going to say, I've got therapy next week. I'm bringing this up. <laughs> no Clune Dog. No Clune Dog. It's funny and bread. All I hear is not on the, not on the, not on the, not on the. All right, number 10 is an interesting one, but I, I think it's fair. I would like to see it a little bit lower on the list, personally, but Anthony Hopkins. Cool <laughs> actor, creepy dude. He's done some amazing fucking performances, and he seems very classy, very uh, put together, but kind mm-hmm. of, cre- doesn't he kind of creep you out even in real life? Even though he's playing a guy. When I, when I think of him, I don't think of cool yeah well i bet you do with this next character or this next actor and i'm kind of shocked none of you got here samuel l motherfucking jackson oh, shit. he's the yeah, epitome yeah, of, of fucking cool fair that's fair. hey i want you to go look in that bag and get the one that says the wallet that says bad, <laughs> bad motherfucker. <laughs> um okay eight is a blast from the past but in his day, absolutely, Marlon Brando. Oh, I was it was on the tip of my tongue. God Ooh, that would have got you 18 points and uh, turned turn things around. Just, but the thing is, I think now now I think now we think of him as just kind of a weirdo, right? Like it's sure. like it's yeah. been long enough to where it's, it's like tough. he he might have been cool. It's like a lot of these things where it's like, well, if this was 10 years ago mm-hmm. or 15 years ago, that's kind of how I felt about the whole Brando thing. You know yeah. What I mean? Well, number seven, uh, it wasn't the Big Lebowski, but it was The Stranger. Darkness washed over the dude. The classic voice of cinema, Sam Elliott. He uh, is he is okay. one yeah. cool motherfucker. He's pretty fucking cool. He yeah. is just always, he's just always that guy. And he was in Roadhouse, too. That's got to make you feel a little bit better, Chris. It doesn't. Chris already no. ju- jumped out. <laughs> Chris just tested his living room window, and it failed. <laughs> <laughs> uh okay so six christopher walken number five al pacino motherfuckers oh yeah, yeah. that's sure. pretty cool yeah that motherfucker is a badass um, yeah. and even as an old man he's still cool as fuck uh, even going back gonna... to oceans 11 he was a badass in those those movies um uh, i think the third one anyway Number four, Morgan Freeman. We got the rest. Uh, three, Harrison Ford. Two, Sean Connery. And one, Denzel motherfucking Washington. Crazy. Lyle, you killed it on that one. 71 yeah, fucking well done, points. Sir. That uh, was I, impressive. I still can't believe that, that Sean Connery was number two. I figured, like, oh, he's basically mostly known for James Bond and, like, fucking Highlander, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. But, but still, yeah. pretty damn epic and classic, right? Well, it's another one of those things like Harrison Ford. Yeah, he's only known right. for a couple of things, but there were nine versions of that. <laughs> those yeah, movies, they true. lasted oh, forever. Yeah. People would be so. talking about the coolness of James Bond, which was yeah. the epitome of Sean Connery to some degree yeah. Uh, yeah. in real life. So, yeah. And Sean Connery, I just read a story about him that he was famous for having heat. I don't think he really ever had one-on-one sex. It was threesomes or above. <laughs> that was his uh, preferred way of doing it. Like a threesome was just normal sex. And then it went up from there. You know, the interesting dude. I mean, well, that's, that's some James crazy. Bond shit right there. 
one push. Why have one pushy when you can have octopushies? Although I think that was actually <laughs> Timothy Dalton era <laughs> James Bond. God what wait, what Bond it. was that? Maybe that was uh, Bob, that was Octopus. Roger Moore. Roger Moore. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get on out of here. That was fun, and uh, we'll get back to the regular thing next week, I do believe, and we will talk about some nine eleven. We also need to bring your guys' picks for most underrated albums. So I'm going to give you one more week. Uh, I think we got three or four to read right now. Wouldn't mind one more, uh, one or two more. So send that to RadarStationArt at gmail.com, and we will get that on the show. I think we'll probably just quickly go through these uh, like we did last time, and maybe we'll just we'll either decide if we want to give them each a spin or decide on one. We'll see. We'll, we'll figure it out by then. So you have one more uh, one more week to get us <clears throat> your submission, and then we will be getting back to our picks. And I believe we settled on guilty pleasures, which I'm really excited to uh, expose some of our weak sides with guilty. Oh my! Guilty is that the, is that the next step? That's what we're I gonna like do. That. Yeah. Uh, I don't really. I'm yeah. not really ashamed of too much of what I listen to, but I have a few different takes on guilty pleasure listening. Maybe some more surprising type stuff. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Lau. Abba, Abba Gold. Oh, I'm never afraid of Abba. Uh, never ashamed of my Abba or Journey. And, uh, but we'll talk more about that soon. <laughs> There's a couple things that, uh, well, we'll talk about it. <laughs> we'll <laughs> All just right, leave guys, it there. I got to go tuck my kid in. I love you guys. Good Get night. Back. Get better All soon. Right. We'll talk next week. Next bye. Week, bye. News quiz returns. And we'll have bye. a guest. News returns. Oh, exciting. Okay. Bye, guys. Good night. I love it. It's from the heart. But he's no. cool. He's a cool dude. He's, <laughs> <laughs> he's cool. He's cool as hell. <laughs>